Recording in progress. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the mayor's briefing September 8th to order for September 8th, 2022. Uh, before I present the mayor, I'm just going to ask all people who are taping and recording, just give us your names and address. That's all I need. Starting with you, sir. Thank you. Is anybody else here going to be taping or recording this meeting of the mayor's briefing? Seeing none, Mayor, you have the floor. Thank you, President LaFlam. First and foremost, welcome to City Hall, everyone. It's a beautiful day here in the city of Chicopee. I'm going to get in right into the mayor's order. Mayor's order one. It's an appropriation of $125,000 to the following named account settlement in the case of Fisher versus the city of Chicopee from the available funds and the stabilization fund. Uh, just, I know that the city council has already been briefed about this settlement case. I know that attorney St. Clair is here. Two of our assistant city solicitors were involved in, in mediation for this particular case that dates back prior to the current administration and also the current chief. And it's been deemed to be in the best interest of the city to settle. And I know that the council has been briefed in executive session. I really don't have anything more to add other than uh, I encourage you that we move forward with the settlement on behalf of the law department and the residents here of the city of Chicopee. Any questions about Mayor's Order 1? No. Thank you. Mayor's Order 2. It's the appropriation of $1,250.44 to the following named account, city clerk salary account for out of rank from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Um, what has happened in this particular situation is we have an employee who I believe has left, and I know the city clerk is here, and another employee who's taking on those duties and responsibilities, and as part of the union contract is paid out of rank for, that, for the work that they're doing. Any questions about Mayor's Order 2? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 3 is the appropriation of $11,000 to the following named account, golf special account for the purchase of equipment from the available funds in the golf pro shop inventory revolving account. As you can see from the background information, I believe that our director of golf, I thought I saw Mike here. Oh, Mike is yeah, here. Yes. Uh, Mike and I had conversation, uh, the turbine blower that they use for not only just removing leaves, but also airifying cores and debris and more. Um, is certainly outlived its useful life. It's a 2006, and it needs to be replaced. Any questions about the blower? Sure. Councillor Bellick here. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. I, I know it's an old timer, but can we get any trade-in value with that at all as an offset? Uh, Mike, if you want to approach that microphone right there. I don't have an answer to that, but I don't think it's worth very much out there. It, it's actually still usable right now, and uh, it's the only one we have. And this, you know, it, it, it's being you. It'll be used, as the mayor said, for uh, not only blowing leaves, but we use it for uh, when we airify. Uh, anytime storm comes through to clean up the golf course quickly, it's the biggest blower we have. And uh, if we lose the one we have, this, you know, it'll all right. It'll be back okay. Back All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. I was just hoping we might get a nickel or so for it. Thank you. And again, it's also coming out of their own inventory revolving right. account. The other one will be a backup. Any other questions or comments about Mayor's Order 3? <clears throat> thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 4 <laughs> is the appropriation of $21,700 to the following named account, DPW, Park special account for Williams Park project from the available funds in the stabilization account. Mm -hmm. I know that our superintendent of DPW is here, and you can see from the background information, uh, when we were installing our redundant water main transmission project, uh, we came across, I believe, some down gradient contamination. Mm -hmm. And Liz, if you could take it from there. And uh, again, this is us just doing what we need to do. We self-reported the project, the problem, and now that we found out that the gradient, it looks like the source is on private property. And Liz, could you take it from here? So um, as you guys recall, we did have to, uh, we found some riveted metal. It looked like it had been maybe an underground storage tank. 
We hired uh, our consultant, Tyan Bond, to do um, some initial uh, investigation, some uh, phase one study to see what the source was and what, whether or not it was actually um, a release. And so after several uh, iterations of borings and identifying where the contaminants were, it is found that the contaminants in the soil are upstream <coughs> of the park, so upgrading of the park. We did submit letters, so we were required by EPA to continue um, kind of trying to resolve this matter, but with it being on private par property, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So um, we met with our attorney and our consultant, and it was decided that we should file for downgrading status, which would then, we would be responsible for containing um, the uh, contamination on, on our property, on the city's property, but we are not responsible for anything beyond that. And we don't need to continue trying to figure out where it's coming from. Um, that would be on EPA to mandate that uh, to those uh, upgrading us. So this downgrading status helps us as far as our liability associated uh, with this contamination. And just for the viewing audience, I just want to point out that when the city finds something like contamination, in this case, I believe it might be fuel oil. It's, to, it's very old types of petroleum. We, we, yeah. We're mandated to self-report immediately, and that's what we did. And, and this is, we've been taking every uh, step through this process that we need to to make sure that we're doing the right thing. And we've at, located that the, now that the property, that the contamination is, it's above and beyond Williams Park. And now we're going to act as a, I'm sorry. We're going to. File for downgradient. Downgradient status. status. Thank you. Sure, Derek. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, Superintendent. Is there? Are you able to give an estimate for what the total cost of the cleanup would be on both the city property and the private property of this uh, contamination? Now, for now, filing this status, we just have to monitor it, which we do. When we did the borings, we had them put in monitoring wells because, mm -hmm. thankfully, everybody is on the public water system, so we don't have to worry about. Uh, um, ground um, drinking water wells, you know, like the homes are not um, getting their drinking water from underground. Mm -hmm. So we just have to continue to monitor, monitor it and see what the impacts are. It's fairly deep. It's, so there's no potential, no impact to anybody at the surface, um, but it's more about the contaminants near the groundwater level. Uh, my my uh, concern is just that the city's legal defenses are going to be more expensive than cleaning up the mess itself. So the city of Chicopee, if I may, Liz, uh, Derek, the city of Chicopee has done its part now. We don't know where the source is coming from. It's on private property. So filing for downgradient status, meaning that we have no idea where the source is. We don't know how, what's, where, if it's going to continue to flow downgradient, and we don't know what the impact of Williams Park is going to be or how much it would cost to rent, to remediate, because frankly, we don't know where the point of of uh, contamination. And is. we've actually outlined, we have all of the boundaries of this contamination and it hasn't migrated. It's just sitting there. Which and is so good we news. don't really have to do anything as long as we file for this status because the source would be the one responsible once that's determined for the cleanup. Thank you. Similar to what happens at Re Uniroyal. Thank you. President LaFlam. Yes, uh, who's gonna do the monitoring how often? So, um, Ty and Bond is our environmental consultant and they would be the ones doing the monitoring. I don't have a frequency yet um, as to how often we're gonna be monitoring. This. So the 21,007 is This for, is just a file for downgrading status. Just filing, so we'll be paying later. We may for have, the, yes. for the, Well, they're not gonna monitor for free. No, of course um, not. So, and then we would want to know how long that monitoring is going yeah. to be. Yeah, so first we have to apply for this. If we get Agreed. down gradient status from EPA, then we would move forward. Agreed, um, thank you. As you know, next steps. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about Mayor's Order 4? Thank you for your concern. Before we go to Mayor's Order 5, uh, if anybody is uh, taping a video, sir, can I have your name and address? Yes. And who are you here representing? 22 News. Thank you. Is anybody else coming in that? No, I happen to see you. Thank you. All set, Mayor. Thank you. Mayor's Order 5. Order that the City Council accept the additional fiscal year 20 
SAMSHMA Police Drug Addiction Response Team DART grant in the amount of $8,000 from the City of Northampton. Said grant is to be used for decreasing the impacts of substance abuse disorders and opioid overdose fatalities for people and families and is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. I know that we have our chief here. This is a grant that we've received annually and we're fortunate enough that there's still funds available from 2020 that we're able to uh, receive another $8,000 as we combat opioid abuse and, and overdosing here in the city of Chicopee. Chief, anything you want to add? Thank you. Yes, uh, this money is used uh, to coincide with our drug addiction recovery teams. What we do is if we receive a report of an overdose, we have a, a DART officer go out with a member of the Mercy Medical Team and a member from Tapestry. We go to the uh, victim's house, the person who's overdosed, offer them treatment services to, to see if there's anything we can do to assist them to get into recovery. That's what the money is, is utilized for. Thank you. Any questions about the grant? Thank you for your consideration and accepting. <clears throat> Mayor's Order 6. Order that the City Council accept the donation of poker chips from the police supervisors and patrolmen's union to the Chicopee Police Department. These chips are to be used at the bike rodeo and be handed out by the police officers to any child seen wearing a helmet while riding their bike. Said poker chip donation has a value of $495 and is accepted on, in accordance with Mass Journal Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. The chips in totality are worth $495, just for clarity. So again, we're rewarding kids for wearing helmets, and uh, thank you to the Patrolman's Union for their generosity in promoting this program. Any questions about the grant and receiving the grant? Sure. I just Council have a Liberate. question on the uh, rodeo. Uh, is that something we have every year? So the rodeo, I believe, was a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I'll let Chief Major fill you in. I believe it was at one of our parks. Yes, sir. It was at uh, Wisniewski Park down in Chicopee Center, and what we did was offer bike safety courses, training courses, proper wear of helmets. We had uh, Bob the Bike Man come down, do a adjustments on the bikes, and I believe there was also some individuals that were able to get bikes from Bob as uh, part of this program. We do intend to do it throughout the city in different districts and hopefully engage the youth and their parents and the community through this program. Very good. Th thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw another hand. Uh, Councilor Tillotson. <clears throat> I was curious about the uh, chips, uh, what value they had. So I asked the chief as I came in the door, how much did they get for a chip? And the chip is the reward. There's a Correct. little something on the chip that congratulates them for having uh, worn their helmet and so forth, but uh, there, there's nothing beyond that. But when you hear the word chip, you think, well, maybe they're going to be a bonus. You cash the chip in and get a $5 bill. And he said, he was laughing when I said that. So, but anyway, I thought it was cute that they, the reward is the chip. Thank you. Hmm. Again, thank you for your consideration to, for that donation. Mm -hmm. Mayor's Order 7, order that the City Council accept the attached names, donations, and the amount of $155 to the Chicopee Public Library. Said donations are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Any questions about the donations? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 8 is Chapter 7, Ordinance Revisions. And if you take a look uh, at Chapter 7, at the back, I know that our HR director, Paul Winspear, is here, and I believe the change is for one of the generalists. Yes. yes. And I'll let Paul fill you in. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Council, mayor, constituents. Um, the request that you have before you are in twofold. Um, for the senior generalist position, we did acquire an asset uh, that has a plethora of municipal and human resources experience, which is a rare but unique opportunity for us. Um, to do so, 
uh, we wanted to consider the years of municipal experience, both directly as it applies to the body of human resources and municipal government and civil service compliance, which is also a unique factor applicable to Chicopee and for which we would have acquired this asset at grade seven, step five, in comparison to the previous incumbent who was promoted, um, that was at a grade seven, step one. Um, the additional expenses, none for this fiscal year, as we were already accounted for budget by way of a gap of filling between the promotion and the acquisition of this new employee. Um, and that is the request for you as it applies to the senior generalist. The administrative assistant, which is also a human resources revision to the chapter seven ordinance, is just a change for the acquisition of a new uh, admin specialist that will be starting with us next Monday. Uh, graduate of UMass Amherst, uh, comes from a background of office management um, and is looking to grow her career in the human resources field. We're actually pretty excited to have her. Um, so she'll be starting on Monday, but she will be starting at the beginning of the scale. So it's actually going back from a grade four, step three to grade four, step one of the non-union scale respectively. Thank you, any questions about the chapter seven ordinance revisions? Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Paul, for that explanation. Mayor's Order 9, it's the final order of assessment. This is an, an order authorizing the City Council in accordance with the powers granted to it by the City Charter of Section 230-3 of the Chicopee City Code and Mass General Law, Chapter 83, Sections 25 and 27, to order the construction of sewer infrastructure on, the, on or near the area of Bluebird Acres Mobile Home Park on the streets and property identified in the attached final order for assessment of a betterment as outlined in said order. See the attached final assessment. It's no secret, it's something we've been working on. Uh, that Bluebird Acres private septic system had failed and the city of Chicopee had negotiated and worked with them to create a betterment project that the city put in half of the proportionate share for the betterment to install public sewer there so that the residents of Bluebird Acres were able to maintain and keep their homes. Otherwise, if they remained on their private septic system, they would have, numbers would have been reduced to approximately, I think, 30 units would have been allowed to stay at Bluebird Acres. This allowed them to keep uh, all those residents uh, uh, and have them keep their homes. Liz, anything you'd like to add about the betterment? So. Um this is the final assessment uh, at the beginning of the project. The council approved the initial assessment is how we engage the project. Um, we used SRF loan to cover the costs. Um, there was an initial estimate to that cost. And now the final assessment is based on the final cost of the project, which is a little bit less than what was initially anticipated um, with the initial estimate before it went out to bid. So. The assessment is based on um, what was agreed upon by the council in the initial assessment, so it's the 50-50 split on the loan payments. And then the, we've worked, D, DPW worked with um, assessors and collector's office to come up with a plan on how we would be billing um, Bluebird Acres for this. And uh, it was decided that we would be billing with their tax bill for the betterment. Um, so this is just the final assessment, the final costs. The project is completed. Um, there's some few punch list items, but there are no anticipated additional costs associated with that project. So we had a final value. And we're looking to get this uh, approved so that this, the, betterment assess, the betterment fees can now get included with their tax bill this year. Any questions? about the final order of assessment for betterment. Thank you for your consideration for Mayor's Order 9. Mayor's Order 10, be it ordered, be it ordered by the mayor, be it ordered that the mayor be authorized to lease 170 Grove Street, including editing said lease, a sample of which is attached in Exhibit A herein, or executing any necessary formalities in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 15. Mm -hmm. So for those who don't know, we do lease a, a building that's part of the Uniroyal campus. That building is leased to Quality Plus. Uh, we've been, they've been leasing that space on an annual basis. Uh, 
we want to continue that lease agreement for another year. Any questions about the Quality Plus lease? Thank you for your consideration. <coughs> Mayor's Order 11, be it ordered that a portion of Grape Street in the city of Chicopee be discontinued in accordance with the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 82, Section 21. As you can see from the background information, this is something that's been going on for quite a while. There's a small triangle of land at the corner, the property at the corner of Ames Avenue and Grape Street where their retaining wall is failing. I believe it's a multifamily home and many of you are shaking heads and already aware of it. Uh, we're finally getting to the point where we're gonna discontinue part of the layout so they can re repair that retaining wall as part of their private property. Uh, that coincides uh, with Mayor's Order 12. Any questions about Mayor's Order 11? Mayor, who does the uh, evaluation for the city on the value of that property that we're gonna be giving up? I believe it was considered a nominal, Frank. It's a very small piece, and I believe it was appraised at $1,100. Okay, but it was appraised. Uh, I believe it was appraised. I can find out for you where the number came from. Yeah, but it I can... looked for it, I didn't see it. That's why I'm asking. Okay. All right, thank you. And Mayor's Order 12, be it ordered that a portion of Grave Street previously discontinued be abandoned in accordance with the City Code Section 28-9, and the Mayor be authorized to convey this parcel to the abutter in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 15. Any questions about Mayor's Order 12? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 13, order that the City Council accept accept the list of monetary donations in the amount of $4,625 and the in-kind donations with an estimated value of $9,846. Said donations were for our National Night Out event for 2022 that was held on August 1st at Sarah Jane Park. And they are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A and 53A and a half. I, I don't know if Katie wants to say a few words, but National Night Out was a huge success this year. And again, we're very thankful for the generosity of this community to come forward with not only donations in the form of money, but also in-kind donations to allow us to have such a successful event. So this is how the process where we have to accept the donations. Correct. So any questions about the donations for National Night Out 2022? Thank you for your consideration. Mayor's Order 14, order that the City Council accept a donation in the amount of $4,926.60 to the Chicopee Senior Center. Said donations are for the senior meals for the month of July 2022, and they are accepted under accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Uh, this is what we do every month. We have to accept uh, the donations, and uh, any question on it, it's a routine for every month. Seeing none, Mayor, would you like to make a few comments? Before I would. Your, There's a couple done. of really important events that I think are worth mentioning tonight, and notably, uh, one of them is the 75th anniversary of our Air Force. The United States Air Force will be celebrating 75 years of existence, and we're really part of the partnership that we have here with the city of Chicopee and the Air Force Reserve Base. We will proudly be raising the Air Force flag uh, right outside City Hall tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. For anyone who would like to join me, Colonel Janik and other dignitaries, uh, please all are welcome as we proudly raise the Air Force flag on City Hall. And the other event that I think is also important to mention because we never want to forget, uh, that's the 9-11 Mass that will be held on Sunday night at 7 p.m. at St. Stanislaus. Uh, again, uh, it, it was a horrific acts were performed in 2001. And we don't ever want to forget, uh, and we always want to remember the impact that that made on this country and uh, all those who gave their lives from first responders to just average civilians. Um, we want to make sure that we recognize that here in the city of Chicopee. So please, all are welcome to join us for the 9-11 Mass at, again at St. Stanislaus on Sunday at 7 p.m. And that's all I have. Uh, gentlemen, again, and ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to forget you, Del Marino, or you, Mary Beth. Have a great meeting, and thank you for your consideration. Yes, and, and for the record, Councilor Brooks 
and Contour uh, McAuliffe, Joel McAuliffe, is on the mayor's briefing uh, this evening. We will take a five minute recess. Thank you.
get ready. We'll give one minute. I know we're way past the time, but unfortunately, there's a couple of things we needed to do to prepare for this meeting tonight. So in one minute, we're going to start the city council meeting. Okay, thank you all for waiting. Um, my, I would just like to say a couple words prior to us starting the meeting tonight. Um, we are going to uh, allow everybody to talk. We're gonna do, when we do public input, we're gonna do the people in the house tonight at the city council chamber uh, auditorium. Then we will do Zoom after that. Um, and on Zoom, uh, we do not have, if you're on Zoom and you did not give us your name, uh, if you could put your hand up prior to, I'm gonna announce that we're doing Zoom, if you could uh, put your hand up uh, with the uh, icon, um, I will uh, note that you are uh, to speak. Uh, the other thing is, um, I just wanna go over a couple rules of what we would like to do tonight, is please, please address the, the president of the board, which is myself on everything. Um, please keep it to uh, three minutes. Everybody will be three minutes. Um, no exceptions. Uh, there's a lot of people that may want to talk tonight. We have a big agenda. And that I only ask, after we do the two uh, on this one here, that we're going to take a three-minute recess and, and ask that take uh, all your uh, equipment, supplies, and, and go out in the hallway if you want to discuss, because we have a long agenda. So we want to continue with our, our meeting. So we'll, we will take a three minute right after uh, that vote's been taken in that. So we would appreciate your help with that, because we have, we have 43 items to do tonight. Um, so that's where, how we're going to uh, do this meeting. I also want to note that we have on tonight's uh, meeting uh, for the City Council, September 8, 2022, uh, Shane Brooks and Joel McAuliffe on, on Zoom tonight. With that said, um, uh, we'll th let me find out where we're up to. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I would like to call the order of September 8, 2022 City Council meeting to order. Please rise to the pledge of the flag. Thank you. And now we'll take a moment of silence for all those who protect us here and abroad. Thank you. I would ask that if you could uh, put your cell phones on, on vibrate or not to interrupt the meeting tonight. Um, thank you. Uh, Mr. President. Uh, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to suspend rule number 12D. Oh, hold on, hold on. We're, we can't get to that yet. We okay. have to, f okay. One minute, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you do that. And, thank okay, you. thank you. Uh, we need to do roll call. President LaFlam. Here. Roy. Here. 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 Brooks. Councilor Brooks. Here. Lopez. Here. 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 Uh, Councilor Cushane called me. He's not able, he's sick tonight, will not be able to Zoom or call in. Thank you. I, um, I believe I've seen her come in. Um, I want to welcome uh, school department liaison Sandra Perret uh, here tonight. I know she's here somewhere in the audience. Oh, thank you. I see the hand. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Um, before. Uh, before we get to public input, um, I'm going to allow our attorney, Dan Garvey, to make a statement. Um, Dan, could you make your statement? Sure. I just wanted to inform the council and the public that I did have a conversation with Councilor McCullough today. And although he did receive written documentation that it would not be a violation of the ethics rules and regulations of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts if he participated in items 15 and 16, he has decided to abstain from items 15 and 16, mm -hmm. and I believe his reason is he wants the focus to be on the application itself rather than him. So as I mentioned, Councilor McAuliffe has made the decision to abstain from items 15 and 16 on tonight's agenda. 
Thank you very much. In compliance with the open meeting law, the City of Chicopee is broadcasting live and for future broadcasts this meeting on Chicopee TV. Is anyone in the audience, audio, video, or taking this meeting, taping this meeting, please state your name and address uh, for the record. I'll start with you, General, sir, again. Thank you. Is there anybody else video or taping? Okay, thank you. Okay, public input. Public input is limited to three minutes or less. There will be no discussion of collective bargaining or personal attack. Um, I know there's people in the audience that want to talk, uh, but I'm going to allow uh, Contra Dobas, would you like to make a motion? And I'll take that motion now. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to suspend uh, rule number 12D and allow one representative of the applicant and opposition to speak for eight minutes instead of the normal three minutes. Motion made and second that we allow the applicant and the opposition to speak for eight minutes before or at the end of public input. On the motion, roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Falkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pinac Costello. Yes. Twelve. Yes. Okay, and the motion passes. Uh, representative for the opposed, you want before or after? It's up to you. You're welcome to go first. Uh, unfortunately, this thing's set for three minutes, and so I'm gonna put my phone on the eight minutes. Um, for you, sir. Yeah, no problem. Of course. He's got the book. Tell me when you're ready to start. Go ahead, sir. I'm going to start this. Uh, good evening, councillors. My name is Seth Wilson. I represent, at this point, over 300. Step uh, closer to the microphone. Sorry. So everybody at this point, you. I represent over 300 uh, residents of the city of Chicopee who are opposed to the pilot truck stop. And I will try to give you a very quick overview. I've provided a written submission for your consideration that outlines the reasons that establish that denial of this proposal is actually the only proper response. Uh, so I've submitted the originals of uh, the petitions so that those are of record. I understand that the councillors all received yesterday a binder, which constitutes essentially a litigation threat from Pilot, assur assuring the councillors that if for some reason they don't go along with Pilot's proposal, they're going to sue you in Superior Court. So not sure exactly why, but from my perspective, that's clearly a demonstration of desperation. They have to threaten to sue you in order to try to prevent you from considering the best interests of the individuals of the residents of the city of Chicopee. I'll go through that a little bit later further, but I think it's really interesting that the cover of that binder, if you look at the cover, it's titled a special permit request. The core of their principle is that this should be allowed of right, and yet on the cover, they admit that it's a special permit request, which under 40A is discretionary. I would also call your attention to the rule, specifically 188.14, that applies to the license being requested here, which specifically reads, licenses may be granted. Not shall, but may. This is a completely discretionary decision for the city council to make. This is not something that just because there's some zoning ability to have a self-service station in a particular zone means that you're required to grant this license. It's discretionary, and I would suggest that not allowing Pilot or anybody else to shove something down your throat is something that's worth fighting for. If it wasn't, if it wasn't discretionary, and it would be purely ministerial, and it would say shall. And in order to get the license, they'd go down, fill out the application, hand it to a clerk, clerk would hand it back. But instead, 
It's a vote that requires your consideration and it's taken up an awful lot of your time, required a lot of money being spent on both sides, advocating back and forth. So it's clearly not as of right and not something they're just entitled to have. Second of all, 18820A establishes that the service station license, which is secondary to the storage license, storage license is actually primary. In other words, the service station license is secondary and also discretionary. That means, again, this is in your discretion. Third, they're arguing that for some reason they're entitled to some prior license that was granted to somebody else. Their own binder identifies the prior permit granted to Petrogas, not to Pilot, not to somebody else. And the rules specifically provide that those licenses are not transferable. And, as I discussed at the licensing subcommittee meeting, it was very clear that that was premised on there being no trucks, no tractor trailers allowed at that, primary, at that prior proposal. And that was a specific condition of the prior grant. So it's not, it's completely discretionary. There's no prior license to pilot, and the licenses aren't transferable. Pilot can't force you to have more risk by granting the license. It's not, dis it's not defensible, and it's against the interests of all of the voters, not only the ones that have signed the petition, but also the ones that have shown up here to let you know that they disagree with having that station there, and they can provide you with additional details. I'm just trying to give you an overview of what I've provided you in writing so it's clear for the record. This isn't an automobile service station. They argue in their letter that this is some, some sort of automobile service station and not a truck stop. They've got parking for 24 trucks. They're talking about, well, their traffic report suggests that there's a minimum of 20 trucks per hour, and that's the number that they rely on. That's the number they provided to Mass DOT. That's the number that they provided on their MEPA filings. But guess what? That's a number that they came up with. That's the number of trucks that they can fuel in an hour. That doesn't mean that's the maximum number of trucks that are actually gonna be coming into the station. I will bet you that in discovery, if there is litigation, we will find that the profit numbers that they're running on that station are far in excess of 20 trucks per hour, and that'll show up in numerous other records as well. There's no way that that truck stop is built on 20 trucks per hour. And yet that's the one that they offer for all of their traffic studies. And I've provided in the licensing subcommittee meeting a letter that detailed all of the major, major issues with that traffic assessment that they've offered, which was based on and premised on the prior study, which was done for a hotel. And again, they added the 20 trucks per hour at maximum rate. That's clearly not applicable, because guess what? More trucks are gonna be coming in, they've got 24 parking spots, People are gonna be coming in to use the bathroom. Truckers are gonna be coming in and parking. Truckers aren't gonna follow the choreography, you know, the choreographed dance that they've offered in, uh, I believe it's page 10-0. And again, that's listed in my, uh, in my submission. It's just simply not tenable that there aren't going to be stack ups of trucks down into the intersections and that those intersections aren't gonna be significantly impacted and significantly downgraded and that traffic study establishes it. If you look, and I've provided it previously, but if you look at it, and it's actually in exhibit three of their binder, their truck numbers in the build and no build condition, their heavy truck numbers are exactly the same in the build and no build condition. How can that be? If they don't build the, the stop, there are gonna be the same percentage of trucks and the same volume of trucks coming in and out? Nowhere you close. have one minute left, just so you know. Okay, thank you. So, again, I would refer everyone to the submissions that I've made in writing here. I think the other things that I would call to your attention are the safety issues and the safety concerns associated with above ground storage tanks. There's only one other above ground storage tank anywhere in the state, that's on the pike in a completely isolated area. It's not appropriate here. If you look at the parking provisions, the rules are not followed in terms of there's parking in front of the clerk, there's parking between 
the, uh, the fueling station and where they need to go, and I've cited those rules here as well. Uh, again, the storage proposed is abnormally large. And it also t fails to take into account the trucking details, fail to take into account the significant number of, uh, of trucking facilities that have been built up in the last few years around the area. All right. uh, thank you very much. Just so for the record, I am timing here, and the clerk is uh, verifying the time. Sir, would you like to go before or after? One time only. Before. Okay, go ahead, sir, and we're going to do the same way. Start the clock. Um, yeah, good evening. My name is Lou Savara. Uh, I'm an attorney at a firm at Bowditch and Dewey in Worcester, and I'm here tonight representing the applicants for the two licenses you're about to. Uh, my clients are here in the front row uh, to, you, to, my, to my right, along with uh, my co-counsel, Tom Reedy, and uh, Tom Murphy, who I think some of you, some of you know. Um, First of all, let me say thank you, Mr. President, and for the entire uh, 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 city council. Um, I know this is important, and I know that it's passionate for some people who feel strongly about the, about the uh, service um, stop that's about to be uh, built and hopefully built on that site. Um, but I'm going to suggest to you, uh, and obviously defer to the advice of, of your legal counsel, um, not what I say, not what my brother just said, but what your counsel tells you. But, but this isn't a political issue. It's a, it's a legal issue. Um, and sometimes um, the, le the legal issues need to be respected even when they may not be politically expedient or politically popular. I'm going to suggest to you in the binders that we gave you all yesterday and, and frankly, all the material that was provided to the town boards uh, and the agencies and the state that have already reviewed this project, including the planning board, which has approved this project, that this is a use as a right that, that my clients have established and it's been accepted that they can use the property as proposed. And all that we're talking about today is the granting of the licenses that are necessary to use it as has been allowed. And, uh, and I don't think that's discretionary, but again, I defer to your counsel, that you can't grant a use and then take away the ability of use it by, by rejecting a properly submitted license application. It's not discretionary, with all due respect to my, 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 my brother. You know, and he suggested um, that somehow your decision uh, should be affected you know, by, quote, unquote, threat of litigation. Uh, here's the reality of the situation, uh, that my clients want to be members of this community. They're serious about this investment, uh, both the owner of the property and pilot who wants to develop it. They're absolutely convinced this is a positive development for the community, and not just in terms of tax revenue, but in terms of making the, the area a safer drive down Burnett Road by separating traffic, uh, as well as all the other benefits that it will provide. And they're serious about this. And, and frankly, when we talked about the message, we wanted to make sure the city understood how serious they were and that we, our hope and the reason of, of giving the information in one place and providing you with our position is that you understand why we think that. Um, th th this is a matter that my client has crossed their T's and dotted their I's. It's a matter that they have a legal right to, and I've been a, a lawyer for, for 40 years now, and. Um, and I'm a trial lawyer, and that's what I do, and that's what I've been doing for a long time. And I look at the evidence, whether I'm representing a defendant or a plaintiff, and not the emotions, and not the politics, but the evidence. And um, I would urge you, uh, as representatives of the city, to look at the evidence, to look at the facts, to listen 
to your legal counsel. And you'll, if you do all those things, even and with all due respect to your neighbors, and I know that's important to you, it's the reason you're elected is to represent their interests. But the fact of the matter is, it's a legal issue, not a, not a political one. Thank you for your time and for listening. Okay, you have four minutes, uh, is that it? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we're gonna open up to public input on the floor, and I just ask, if you hear someone saying something once, uh, we'll get it, and doesn't need to be repeated three, four times. If you like to, I can't stop you, but to get so many people to be able to say what they feel, we, I, I'd like to, uh, to understand and let certain people talk and then try to go on something different from what they said, but you have the right to do, uh, spend your time, your three minutes, any way you want. Go ahead, Dave, you'll be number one. And anybody after him, you can just follow. Just give me us your name and your address and address the president of the board yep. and no uh, attacks on any individuals. Thank you. Okay. I'll have you reset the timer so we can uh, yeah, get thank that. You, I don't want to get gypped here. Oh, I thought you were done. <laughs> okay, my name is David Amo. I live on uh, 72 Fairway Drive in Chicopee. Um, I'd like to thank all of my uh, friends uh, for coming tonight and supporting us. I want to thank the help from the State Attorney General's Office. I want to thank the Secretary of State's Office for their legal work um, and giving me, giving me inf information. I want to let the public know that we have hit roadblock after roadblock after roadblock from city people who work for the city, from the mayor's office, from the law department, and all the way down. We have had the request um, freedom of information documents, which we have um, yet to receive, and there's only, there's over 2,000 of them, which we're still waiting for, which again, we've hit the, a roadblock from the law department. Pilot's gonna be a good neighbor. In the end of uh, July or June, um, Pilot was um, fined by the EPA over $100,000 for water, illegal water discharge of um, 17 pilot facilities in three states. You call that a good neighbor? I don't think so. They were fined over $100,000. Pilot was fined over $2 million for fraud fraudulently taking money from truckers and over, I'm sorry, over 200 million from truckers, you know, that they were fined by the federal, by the, um, by, by the courts. That's not right. The asthma rate in the, in the, in Chicopee is 17.5% of Students that go to Chickabee schools have asthma. The state um, percentage is 12.9. So we're way above the state when it comes to asthma. All the, the stuff that comes from the old Monsanto and Palmer paving and all the truck stops, it's all coming up to this area. I'm here to fight for our kids and our families. So I want you to do the right thing, and I will tell Pilot right now, Pilot, we don't want you and we don't need you. Go back to where you're from. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Councilors, my name is Kevin Roberts, and my family and I live at 45 LaFon Drive in Chicopee, and we have for the last 50 years. It's been a wonderful life in Ward 6. It's been peaceful, although we have seen in the last 20 or 30 years the area grow, get larger, and the traffic become much heavier, especially down Burnett Road coming from the suburbs going into Springfield. Um, I have had an opportunity to talk to many of my neighbors about this truck stop and the impact that we have, it may have on our neighborhood, and I can tell you from many of the people I've talked to in our neighborhood that they are frightened. They are really frightened. There's safety concerns. You've heard all of this. 
there's uh, health concerns, and of course the traffic concerns. I beseech you to listen to the residents of Ward 6. Listen to them. You see them here tonight. Please vote in their favor. You represent them. Please honor them by representative, representing them in not allowing this truck stop to be built in our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else for public input? Hello, my name is Susan LaPlante. I live at 71 Angela Drive, and I've lived on the Burn Road area for over 55 years. I hope you've all read the email that I sent you this week in regards to my concerns for the Burnett Road area and the second truck stop. I understand that the councilors received a thousand page binder yesterday, a day before the vote, mind you, saying, or should I say, a thousand page binder with a threatening letter to the city and the councilors. It's obvious their attentions is to bully their way through Chicopee. I personally feel this is a disgusting tactic by an obviously desperate company. I believe there's no place in society for bullying, no matter how much money you throw into it. It's totally unacceptable, and this council and the city of Chicopee should not tolerate it. They basically said, if we don't do what they want, your taxpayer dollars will pay to answer them in court. I'm guessing that's Pilot's business as usual policy. Let us not forget that Pilot is the company that was caught by the FBI for scamming their customers and had to pay a restitution of over $200 million. I believe in a statement the government documented said that over 15 probe of its five-year fuel rebate scam that targeted most of their trucking customers, which they considered too unsophisticated to catch on. That should be an example of what you know about the pilot company. Never mind the fact that their CEO got sentenced to 12 years in prison for that. They did what was called jacking the discount by giving credit cards and credit to entice companies to use only their locations and promise them rebates. They sent them improper rebates because the truckers were too unsophisticated. That's not the type of chick company we want in Chicopee. No way. Pilot went from telling us they wanted to be a good neighbor by threatening you, threatening the counselors, threatening the city of Chicopee to get what they want. Well, Pilot might work that way in other parts of the country, but it should not that work that way in the city of Chicopee. I'm requesting that all city councilors vote no to the second truck stop for many reasons, but specifically to tell them it's not acceptable to bully to get what you want, especially in the city of Chicopee. And we will not stand for it. Thank you. Anyone else for public input? Just, you can just come up as you want. Well, good evening. Good to see you all again. Uh, my name is William Jeb. I'm the retired chief of police. Name for the city of can you give us your address too, please? My address is 23 Hemingway Road, Wilbraham, Massachusetts. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm the re as I said, I'm the retired chief from the city of Chicopee. I spent 34 years uh, working uh, every facet of the police department from uh, patrol to uh, the Detective Bureau, Narcotics Unit, and uh, onward to the Chief for the last seven years. I just retired in October. This project that you're, you're uh, reviewing today uh, with the previous administration, Mayor Koss and I and, and many other department heads had reviewed some of this material, but it was relative to a, a hotel and a restaurant. All the traffic studies were conducted uh, in relationship uh, to that understanding. Uh, all the construction renovation project up in the Burnett Road was designed uh, to handle that in a Mercedes uh, dealership. And I was in charge at the time, and uh, one of my sergeants out of the Traffic Bureau, he handled uh, much of that review. And I'm, what I'm hearing tonight from both sides of the ball is a little bit of issue concerning legal issues and political issues. I'm here for public safety issues. 
having been on the department, have served in every capacity, having been the chief of police, this is a problem. This is a public safety problem. When you integrate that truck stop up there with already a current truck stop, which has created a lot of issues for us over the years, prostitution, drug activities, murders, rapes, you name it, it's occurred up there. You're putting another element up there that will invite the same clients. So my concern as the former chief, also as a taxpayer for the city of Chicopee, because I do own uh, multiple properties, just want to make that known to the council. But my concern overall is public safety always has been in my 34 years with the city. The review, the traffic studies, all the construction that was done up there, even back on the Swinigan Drive construction project to ease the burden of the traffic on Burnett Road. Something some of you may or may not know, in 2014, I looked on Burnett Road for real estate. I was going to purchase and move my family there. But at that time, my wife and I, we went there during crucial times, and no way did I want to contend with that traffic. And some of the information I've seen to date relative to this project and some of the uh, amounts, the increased traffic, I heard someone say, uh, what is it, 20 an hour? I'm seeing over, I think upwards of 7,000 vehicles a day is what I've, I, I looked at. And there's no way can Burnett Road handle that safely. And unfortunately for our police department, we don't have the resources to go up there and deal with traffic accidents almost every other day relative to trucks uh, integrating with uh, regular flow of traffic on and off of 291. Thank you, Chief. Your time You're welcome. Sir. Thank you. Good evening, my name is uh, Kim Hazavardian. I'm a traffic engineer with TEP LLC out of uh, Salem, New Hampshire, North Andover, Massachusetts. Uh, by way of introduction, I'm a professional engineer in uh, Massachusetts and a certified professional uh, traffic operations engineer, and I've experienced uh, since 1981. Uh, I reviewed uh, uh, the project, uh, its location, uh, and uh, the traffic study, and I have some comments I'd like to provide. Uh, the first comment is the project is in a uh, sensitive location. It's proximate to the uh, Mass Turnpike I-291 interchange, which is somewhat unique. You have two freeways, uh, and uh, rather than have direct ramp connections, there's a signal uh, centrally located within the interchange, and uh, that signal and the interchange are very proximate to the project site. Uh, you have that signal that uh, actually interacts uh, in a coordinated manner uh, with the uh, signal at uh, First Avenue, which also serves the uh, site driveway. So again, a, a unique and sensitive location. Uh, the um, current proposal for the site, uh, compared to the previous proposal, involves uh, large trucks. Now, large trucks are different from passenger cars, uh, obviously. Uh, they're physically larger, uh, their turns are wider, uh, and they accelerate more slowly. Uh, that results in uh, usually uh, impeded or worse traffic operations, uh, adding to delays, adding to queue lengths. Um, also, the presence of trucks uh, increases uh, just, just out of the nature of their operation on and off the site, especially on the site. Uh, you have idling trucks. Uh, on the site, trucks will be idling and waiting. There are uh, a large number of parking spaces on the site for trucks. Uh, regarding the uh, percentage of trucks, uh, if uh, you look at the trip generation of the site during the weekday evening peak hour, uh, we have 533 vehicle trips. And uh, just, just looking at 40 trucks, uh, that, that comprises 7.5% of the uh, vehicle trips. Uh, the, the analysis in the report uh, uses 2% for key movements, so there's a mismatch there. And that 7.5% doesn't include trucks that might be on the site for other purposes. They're parked, they're waiting, or whatever. Um, the uh, queuing analysis shows movements with uh, queues of 34 to 46 feet at selected locations. And just one truck is going to be about 70 feet long. Uh, and uh, the uh, traffic counts were done in... Uh, 2017, uh, they, they, uh, there's been traffic changes in the area. Uh, they could be uh, 
captured in new counts. And I see that I'm almost out of time now. Uh, I have uh, additional comments uh, and... Uh, I'm sorry, we're sticking with the three minutes. We gave both applicants the eight minutes and I, I confirmed them with, with the two applicants. Understand. Thank uh, you very much. Good evening. Mr. We're Mr. sticking Chairman, to the three minutes. Mr. Chairman, could you ask him to say his address for the record, please? Could, what's that? His address. Oh, I'm sorry. What's your address? Uh, my, I'm with TAP LLC out of uh, Salem, New Hampshire, North Andover, Massachusetts. Uh, the address in Salem, New Hampshire is 93 Stiles Road. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public input? Uh, I uh, also submitted uh, my comments in writing. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Gene? Yep. My name's Gene Prisbilowitz, Eugene Prisbilowitz, 11 Caddyshack Drive, Chicopee, Massachusetts. And this project, it has no, no value to the city whatsoever. Minimal tax revenue, that's it. Otherwise, it brings pollution, safety issues, and more than likely, crime. As, like the email I sent all of you up at the uh, Ludlow Service Plaza just a week and a half ago. As far as legal, I'm not a lawyer, but I'll tell you right now, it's like Mr. Patel breached a contract. He proposed a hotel our city councilor was for it 100%. The people here backed him. He has since changed his mind. If you allow this, you're setting a precedent in the city for future developers to walk in here, propose a project, and then change their mind. I don't know how the hell you people can actually do that. You're setting the city up for failure, and the responsibility is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. David Boisel, 117 to Jody Lane. Um, I can't say anything more than what was said, uh, but reiterate uh, Chief Jeb, former Chief Jeb's uh, life safety, public safety. Um, it's dangerous now. It's a no-brainer. Walks like a duck, talks like a duck. It's a duck. It's unsafe. Um, the attorneys, I do have a question. If it becomes a legal issue uh, down the road, uh, I would assume our attorneys, uh, if they can do anything, is bring, push everything back. Um, but hopefully you're going to shoot it down today, and we're done. Um, appreciate it, and if you can vote, no. Thank you. Anyone else for public input? My name is Glenn Plant. I live at 71 Angela Drive. Before you start my time, I would just like to make a comment to the chief. Sure, to hold the, on. And to the, um, we've received several complaints from neighbors in our area that they've tried to zoom in recently at the last two meetings and were not available. So I just want to make sure there's note of that, that we've had people try to zoom in to file basically their, 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 you know, their, their concerns and complaints yeah. and have not been able to do that. So and I want to get that on the record that hopefully that's working tonight because I do know people personally that work late want to do that instead of be here. Thank you. Um, just so you know, I'm one of the ones you told. Yep, absolutely. And we have our, our head of our IT director here, uh, Councilor Dobaz and myself sent him a letter to ensure that everything was going to be working to the best of our ability tonight from that comment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So again, I'll start all over. My name is Glenn Plan. I live at 71 Angela Drive. I've been a resident of Chickabee for 62 years. I've been a resident of Burtonette for 30. I'd like to express my concerns and why this project should not be approved by this City Council. I will start off by saying this is the wrong project for this location. I believe the City and the residents of Burnett Road have been misled, misled by the property owner. We were promised that there was going to be a nice hotel with a nice restaurant and a coffee shop. This was most evident as at the time of the proposal there were no complaints by either the residents or our ward councillor. Not to mention the city used grant funds to help develop that intersection because it was proposed to be a hotel. That's, that's one thing. Second also, just to follow up my wife, the uh, pilot corporate board admitted criminal responsibility. Their CEO went to prison for 12 years 
and many of their executives admitted responsibility. That doesn't happen very much for a corporate to admit criminal responsibility. I'm going to go as fast as I can. Well, the truck stop next to an existing truck stop is a start, is far cry from a hotel project. What you have before you here is very similar to what the City Council faced last year when Cumberland Farms tried to build in Aldenville. The only difference is this project will affect the already heavily tra trafficked area by their estimated 7,000 vehicles a day. And that's not just cars. Let's face it, pilots in the business of cutting deals with large transport companies to use their locations, so most of these vehicles will be tractor trailer trucks. There is not one thing that would benefit the Burnett Road area if this passes. We do not need a gas station. Whoops, I'm sorry. I'm used to standing on the podium over there. We do not need a gas station. We have three gas stations within one mile. We do not need another convenience store. We have four convenience stores within one mile. We do not need a restaurant or coffee shop as we have eight total within one mile. And we do not need another truck stop when we have a large truck stop next door in Pride. And there are also two, mind you, located on the Massachusetts Turnpike in Ludlow, one eastbound and westbound. All these references had a direct impact on your Cumberland Farms being shot down with a no vote by this city council. So let's discuss what we will get if this passes. Traffic, more traffic, vehicle accidents, crime, more prostitution, and many more visits by our police to another truck stop. I think you know what the... I think you know what the residents of Burnett Road want. The same vote as the residents of Aldenville got, a no vote. I just want to also say, I spent some time there tonight uh, with my wife. We've been up there a couple times. And watching the trucks exit off the Mass Turnpike now, they cannot stay in the right lane when they come off. Any tractor trailer has to go directly in the right, left lane, furthest left lane, to swing to stay in the right lane. So that's not a safety issue. I don't know what would be a safety issue. Thank you very much. Your time is up. I put it on three so it doesn't buzz, but we stopped at three seconds, but I let you go over for the three seconds. <laughs> Anyone else for public input? Anyone else? Go, go ahead, ma'am. This doesn't pertain to... Uh, get to the mic. Just tip it down if you like. Um, this doesn't pertain to the truck stop. Um, it's on another matter. I got it. It's on another matter, matter number 17. Um, Can you say your name and address for the record? Oh, um, Alexandria Rivera, 28 Thomas Street. Um, I would like to contest the placement of the no parking signs. Um, I've already endured harassment and um, actions of intimidation um, by a neighbor over part, um, the lack of parking. Um, there's th three, three, um, three multifamily houses, a four-family home, a three-family home, and a two-family home um, within a 100-foot um, radius. And because of all of the single-family homes, there is a lack of parking already. Um, by putting signs um, kind of in the middle, sort of, of the middle top of the street is gonna force vehicles to park at the top of the street. We don't have any sidewalks. The children ride bikes in the street. Um, by having cars parked at the very top of the street, that's going to cause cars turning into the street um, visibility issues, which could cause pedestrians that are walking in the street because we have no sidewalks to get hurt. Um, I don't believe that uh, there should be um, parking taken away when there's already a lack of parking, especially when it is going to uh, push vehicles to park at the top of the street, which impedes visibility and causes safety issues for people that live on the street. 
Okay, thank you very much. Do we have anyone else? Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kevin LaPlante. I live at 80 Post Road in Chicopee. I'm here tonight just to discuss some further things. I want you to know that the residents of Burnett Road want the same vote as the residents that the Aldenville got, a no vote. I would like to quote some of you councillors regarding the Aldenville proposal. Councillor Balak here. We had a room full of people who were extremely passionate about their neighborhood. There are many reasons they are in opposition. I will not support this because there is just too much opposition. Is this not a room full of people? Are we not the same as the Aldenville residents? Councillor Tillotson agreed the project was too big and would cause the area to become congested. He said the public made their voice heard. He stated that this was also the wrong project for this location. I think 7,000 more vehicles per day makes this area more congested. <coughs> Councillor Zigarowski stated he wouldn't vote for this for several reasons. He stated that there was already too many gas stations in this area. What are we trying to do, create a gasoline alley? Is this not the same as Burnett Road? We have three gas stations, four convenience stores, and many eating facilities within one mile on Burnett Road, and a truck stop next to the proposed project. What we are trying to do here, are we trying to make a truck stop haven for all trucks? Councillor Laflamme, after hearing the public input, said I agree 100% with the residents. I own property on this street, and there is no way I would vote for this. Is this any different than the people who live off of Burnett Road that have to deal with this con traffic congestion and other problems every day? We own property off that street, and we would have to deal with this. Councillor Bree, I think it's a win for the residents of Aldenville. We would like the tax revenue, yes, but at what cost does it come to the residents? Councillor McAuliffe stated that as a practice of this council, when the ward representative is against the project, having their pulse on that neighborhood, we back them up. Well, I believe our ward council has been very vocal about this, and he's been working extremely hard to stop this. And on a side note, I'd like to thank you, Derek. I really would. I believe it's obvious what the residents want, and that's a no vote. And we will not be satisfied with anything but a no vote. We are determined and willing to see this through. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Okay, anyone else in the audience for public input? One more time, is anyone else for public input? Seeing none, is there, oh, oh Jim, Jim, hold on please. I got Zoom too. Yeah, let me get Zoom, I got it. Is there anyone on Zoom who would like to speak? If you would like to speak, just say your, thank you Linda, just say your name and address for the record please. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is I'm at 145 Post Road. Um, I, I'm not very good at this, but I just I disagree with uh, the pilot. I don't think we should have this. There's a lot of traffic already on Burnett Road, and it's it's impossible most of the time to get through um, to get to the other side, even to go on to 291. It's highly dangerous. I've heard from um, the firefighters over here. Uh, from, uh, from a source that they go to the Pride Station many times for overdosing. Prost there's also prostitution over there. Um, there's, uh, there's, and deaths over there too. It's just, I, I just completely disagree with this. I think, I think you should vote no for this. Are you all set, Linda? I am, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone else on public input? Anyone else on public input? Anyone else in the audience? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to return to the regular order of business. Motion made and second to return to the, or the regular order of business. All in, uh, roll call, please. President LaFlamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Piniac Costello? Yes. Yes. Well, yes. And the motion passes. Uh, I believe we have no minutes, no correct? Minutes. We have no minutes. Okay. Uh, may mayor's orders. Take uh, 15 and 16 out of order? Or do, uh, do we want to take 15 and 16 out of order first? 
Uh, I, I need present? a motion from. I can't make the motion. Someone wants to make a motion. Oh, wait, to take it, it was out? requested to me to let uh, Mayor's Order One be voted on first, and then I'll pull the truck stop out okay. of order. Okay. After Mayor's Order One. After Mayor's, Mayor's Order, order One. one. Order that the sum of one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars be in hereby appropriate to the following named account settlement in the case of Sarah, Sarah Fisher versus City of Chicopee. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Um, Councilor Brooks. Motion made and seconded that the mayor's order to be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and seconded that the motion be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, we were advised uh, in an executive session that um, this would settle the litigation against the city, and I suggest we would want to do that this evening. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Councilor uh, Lopez. Um, I will be voting no on this tonight, not because I don't think we should pay this settlement, but because, number one, I'm not happy with the transparency. I understand that in executive session, we cannot share that with the residents. Um, however, even within the counselors, when we ask questions, um, I specifically asked in executive sessions for specific answers prior to this vote tonight and uh, was not given those answers um, and was not given answers that were uh, that, that would allow me to support this. Um, I, I understand executive session more than, more than uh, people would like to think, um, but I, what I will not be told is that uh, we don't get answers because we can't uh, push answers. Um, I will not be told that we can't um, move on this. And, and it's hard to explain to the residents why I'm voting no without releasing information that I can't release because it's executive session. But trust that my no vote, I know it's probably going to pass because um, the settlement is, is in the best interest of the city in terms of uh, the settlement itself. But the behind the scenes that will probably come out after the settlement occurs, um, you will understand why I voted no. Um, I'm not unhappy with the actions of the city. And I will speak on that a little bit more after uh, we go through the settlement. So I will be voting no tonight. Thank you very much. Any other counselor? Counselor uh, Tillotson. Uh, I, think, I think if we don't <clears throat> settle to, <clears throat> losing my voice here, I think if we don't settle tonight, it, 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 it's going to cost us more. That's the reason why I agree with it, settling it tonight. <clears throat> I think this could go as high as four or $500,000 based on what we heard. Mm -hmm. And I don't, <clears throat> I don't disagree with Counselor Lopez's comments, but I do believe it's best to settle this case tonight for what we were able to get out from under with it and then go forward with, the, with what she's concerned about, and I agree with that. But I think if we postpone it, it's going to cost us a lot more than $125,000 uh, based on what we heard in the executive session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Councilor Costello. Thank you, President Laflamme. I agree with Councilor Lopez. I think now is the time that we have to address the issues that were brought up. We can't say it at this point because it was an executive session, right. but you've brought s some issues up. The sooner that we get those resolved, the better off we're going to be. And at this point, I think it's correct not to vote for the financial settlement due to your argument of transparency. Thank you. Okay, any others? Uh, Councilor Dobas. Thank you, just briefly. I'm also gonna support Councilor Lopez tonight. Uh, I agree with her. I, I uh, don't agree with how the city handled uh, this matter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone on Zoom? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Gorowski. Yes. McCullough. Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? No. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? No. Fabri? Yes. Piniac Costello? No. Nine yes, three no. And the motion passes. Mr. President, I'd like to make an order, I mean, excuse me, I'd like to make a motion that we take items number 15 and 16 out of order, please. Motion made and second to take item number 15 and 16 out of order. Roll call, please. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Abstain. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Kenyak Costello? Yes. 11 yes, one abstention. And the motion passes. 15, please. We have an unfavorable report from the License Committee for an application for a service station license located at 357 Burnett Road for Pilot Travel Centers. Councilor Brooks. Councilor Brooks. 
Motion that the order be received and voted on this evening. Motion made and second that the order be received and voted on this evening. On the motion. On the motion, I think we've heard arguments from both sides. Um, I would like to ask our attorney, uh, Dan Garvey, to just briefly uh, review what our options are here, if this is a actual use as a right, or if this council has leeway to make a determination to deny this application this evening. Okay, Shane, you need to make a motion either to approve or deny it tonight. All right, I'll make a motion to approve just for the sake of making it easier to understand. Okay. This will mean that a yes vote would support the application and a no vote would defeat the application. So this will, this will make it very simple so that we're not questioning whether a yes vote supports a no opinion of this subcommittee and a yes vote doesn't. So motion to approve uh, the license application this evening. Thank you. Um, we'll turn it over to our attorney to explain what you requested. Attorney Thank you. Garvey. Turn it on. Oh, you, you seconded the motion. Yes, I mean, I'll second the motion to, uh, to approve this evening. Right. So I think we're conflating two issues. So the zoning portion of the particular application was already ruled upon by our zoning enforcement officer. So it's my understanding that our zoning for enforcement officer, who happens to be the building commissioner, did issue a ruling that this is a by right use. However, what's before the council is whether or not to issue the licenses, and those are within the discretion of the city council to either issue it or deny it. Hold on, Jim. Hold on, Jim. Jim, Jim, hold on to me, please. And you need to speak into your mic because people can't hear if you've got your back to the folks. Okay, so and I don't. Want, I want everybody to be here. Dan, uh, Jim, can you hold on a minute? Dan, are you all set? I want to make sure you're done. The base, the, the way it's. Am I okay? Now? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. The way it's based now. Can you speak into the mic, please? The way please? it's based now. Uh, a no vote will defeat it, correct? Correct. So the motion you was... Changed it from a negative Can you speak into the mic, Councillor Tillotson, please? I can't even hear you, and I'm sitting three seats away from you. Okay. I, what, Thank you. What, what I'm concerned about is the, the process and how we're going to vote. He changed it from, from what it was at the License Committee, uh, and, and, and he made it as... Uh, he put it on the floor as to pass. So okay. now a no vote will defeat it. Exactly correct. Okay, yes, and no vote will defeat it, but the way the original thing was it written. It defeats the original motion. I hear what you're saying. It, was, All right. it uh, was written unfavorable, and so he understand. changed the vote the way it was done in the license committee and said, no, he, make it favorable. So a, a yes vote, a no vote will defeat it. Is that we'll clarify it right before we take our vote. We'll make sure we clarify it before we take our vote. Okay. Council of Flam, may I just add Yeah, hold, 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 hold on, Shane. Yeah. Shane, hold on a minute, please. Uh, someone else had their hand down up over here. Okay. Well, I think he just had something to add to his motion. Councilor Dobaz. Oh, well, I'll, I'll let him clarify you want first to before okay. I speak. Councilor Brooks. The original motion that was placed on the floor in the subcommittee meeting was a motion to approve with restrictions of all the city departments and SPRAC recommendations. So that is consistent with the motion that I made to make it a little bit easier for us to either give it a yay or a nay vote on the floor this evening. I just want to clarify that. I understand that it was a non-favorable recommendation to approve, but that is consistent with the original motion that was made in the subcommittee meeting that evening. Thank you, and we're gonna go with that. On anyone else for, um, from Zoom? Seeing none, Contra Dobas. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first, uh, first off, I wanna thank um, Councilor Joel McAuliffe for abstaining. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do ethically uh, and morally. Uh, and uh, it speaks a lot to his character, so I want to thank him for, for doing that and uh, uh, gaining a lot of trust from, from Ward 6 uh, residents. I also wanted to bring up, you know, any other uh, city councilor on the board that has taken a large donation from the developers of this parcel. Uh, I respectfully ask that you at least disclose the information, uh, and, uh, you know, I'd like to further ask that you abstain uh, if you took a donation. Uh, I understand that we don't have to file till the end of the year, um, but the residents have made it clear that they are going to check at the end of the year. So I'm asking any colleagues of mine that have taken uh, any large donations that they feel that this could bring a conflict, please, um, please abstain, please disclose that information uh, before you vote. Uh, originally in 2018, uh, when this was supposed to be a new hotel, uh, I voted for it. 
Um, it, there, was, there was supposed to be no truck traffic on the property. Uh, it was supposed to be a four-story hotel. I believe there was four businesses on the first floor. Uh, I voted for it. Uh, I felt that the neighborhood would tolerate it. I thought it, I thought it was uh, an appropriate use of the property. I felt that, that specific, those plans were safe. Uh, and uh, you know that's why I voted for it in 2018. Um, but then some time during the pandemic, this turned from a hotel to a truck stop, uh, and uh, the plans radically changed. And um, you know it brings up a whole bunch of issues. Um, the top, you know, my top concern is obviously traffic. Right, it's a top issue on Burnett Road. Uh, I think everyone would agree. Uh, and there's obviously a lot of holes in the applicant's traffic study. Um, the traffic study uh, is a 2017 traffic study uh, based on mainly 2013 numbers. Um, it was done during you know, times where uh, there were a lot less truck traffic than there is now. Uh, their own study, uh, it shows uh, the existing truck traffic as 2%. And according to their study, it's, it's also going to be 2% when this is complete. Excuse me, if this was to be completed, it would also be 2% which is impossible. How could the truck traffic remain the same before and after they would build a truck stop? Uh, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, it's, it, there's increasing evidence that they used studies for the hotel, the same studies, same traffic studies, uh, and they just applied it to this truck stop, which is not really possible. Uh, and uh, that's not a, a, a political uh, issue, that's a legal issue. You can't use studies for a different development and apply it to this development. You have to redo the studies. You have to do a new traffic study, new projections. Uh, that's how the process is supposed to work uh, with you know, more than 7,000 vehicles added a day if this were to be passed. Um, and you know, a lot of truck traffic, I want to add, which is, which is significantly different than car traffic. Um, this is a significantly different development. Uh, it brings a lot of safety issues. Um, you know, quite frankly, I, I think it would be very, very difficult to, uh, I, I think this would back up down 291. I think it would be difficult to get on the Mass Pike. Um, the intersection, getting off of the Mass Pike and going, turning towards Burnett Road, um, the state has just redone that intersection. Uh, today, I, I viewed for over an hour at the Mercedes-Benz dealership looking down uh, for over an hour, and it's impossible for a truck to turn from the Mass Pike onto Burnett Road. It has to turn into two lanes. It, it can't stay in one lane when turning. Um, so obviously, uh, you know, the DOT planned that intersection for a hotel, not for increased truck traffic. Um, the evidence is increasingly clear, and I want to, and I want to be also be very clear, the, the DOT's um, Department of Transportation, uh, MEPA, all, all the, the SPRAC review, all of, all of these reviews were based on the traffic study for the hotel, uh, not for this development. Um, so uh, there's a, I have a lot of issues with, uh, you know, with the traffic study, with, the, uh, with Mass DOT's uh, so-called improvements. Um, and uh, so I think that's a top issue for me. Um, a lot of things that have been said, uh, crime, this would increase crime significantly. Um, health, right, uh, the um, information from pilot says emissions would go down, but they're talking about the buildings, right? Uh, emissions from uh, the truck stop would be lower than the four-story hotel just building-wise, but what they don't include is the emissions from the trucks, which would make the emissions greater, right? So there, there's a greater health risk with a truck stop. Um, I have an issue with the plans itself. Uh, they have 24 parking spaces for trucks. Um, they uh, themselves in their study, they, they project 20 trucks an hour. Um, but, but they're not, you know, taking into account trucks that park to go take a shower, to go eat, to go buy something. Um, this is easily going to back up. This parcel is not big enough. Um, I want to talk about Pilot itself really quick, uh, which makes me nervous. Uh, Pilot, uh, right here, Pilot Travel Centers, uh, they had to pay over $120,000 fine uh, for violating the Clean Water Act uh, for violations in Iowa, Missouri, and Nebraska. Um, so I've, I have more concerns about uh, both, um, you know, both you know, oil and things from the trucks and also leaks from, from the gas and the oil um, that could violate the Clean, Clean Water Act. And uh, you know, that could cause a, whole, a host of environmental issues. Uh, and the other thing I want to bring up, which is already said in public input, uh, but the uh, ex-CEO uh, of Pilot was sentenced to 12 years in prison for a rebate scam. Uh, and I know, I know other executives were implicated in this, uh, and you know, they had to pay over $200 million in fines. Um, it doesn't seem like the type of company uh, that we would want to give uh, a license to. Um, and uh, you know, I just want to add a couple other things, too, for the fuel storage license. Um, 
it, it is irregular. Uh, there are, you know, we only know of one other above ground fuel storage tank in the state of Massachusetts that's uh, even close to the size. Uh, it's on the Turnpike and Sturbridge, and there's nothing around it. It's on the highway, there's no homes, businesses around it, it's by itself. Um, this is very irregular, this, this uh, above ground uh, fuel storage of this size. Uh, the fire marshal has not approved this yet. Um, there's a lot of safety issues. Uh, this is near major utility lines. Um, and like I already said, they've already violated the Clean Water Act in other states. Uh, so I have a lot of concerns uh, with that as well. Um, I guess uh, uh, through the president to our attorney, um, I have uh, a written document here uh, on behalf of a majority of the uh, opposition the counselors that are opposed to this project and a, a majority of the public. Um, I have a written document here uh, with 22 reasons uh, of why we oppose this um, that I would like to serve, uh, I mean, uh, in the case of an appeal, uh, for, for my defense anyway, um, through, through the chair to uh, our attorney. Um, do I have to read the entire document into the record or can I just read a few excerpts and submit this on the record? Whichever you choose, you can certainly read a few excerpts and just state that that's the purpose or the rationale that you're using when you actually make your formal vote. And, that uh, would go you, to and you can introduce that into the record. And giving it to our clerk. Correct. The copy would have to come to our clerk after you're done reading a few. Uh, th uh, thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, as soon as I'm done reading this, I'll submit this to uh, our attorney for the record. Uh, I'm just, so I'm just going to read a few excerpts um, and uh, I'll submit this to the record so the applicant will have uh, access to this in the near future. Um, <clears throat> There's nothing arbitrary or legal, unsupportable about denying this license. Uh, denial is the only result of thoughtful, legal, required consideration uh, for many of the following reasons. Uh, and also, and I'm just going to skip around a little bit. Um, you know, we should tell pilot, no company or lawyer has the right or power to bully or force you into ignoring your common sense. This isn't an automobile service station, it's a truck stop. Uh, so, you know, they did scare tactics, right? Just because they're saying they're going to sue us or this is going to go to court, that is not a legitimate argument to pass this development. It's going to go to court either way. The residents hired an attorney, the applicant hired an attorney. Uh, you can't approve or deny something based on the fact that it's going to go to court. That is not a legitimate argument. Uh, they knowingly, wrongly assume uh, max truck trips at 20 based on that being the max they can fuel in an hour. But that ignores trucks coming in for supplies, the bathroom, food, or parking in 24 parking spots. Uh, it's, it's flawed and deceptive way uh, to back into a minimal traffic impact number that massively understates pilots' actual uh, expected usage numbers. Uh, in Discovery, uh, there was also video footage um, from the book. Um, it, it showed trucks for, um, for, for, for Pride. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There was a video submitted uh, that showed trucks to Pride that showed backup um, all the way down 291 from Pride and Burnett Road. If we added this pilot truck stop, it would only increase that uh, congestion. Uh, we have uh, a presentation, obviously, from our, our uh, pro professional engineering testimony um, from our, our, our traffic uh, engineer. I uh, appreciate his testimony. I also like that to serve a as our defense. Uh, we have serious concerns about the SPRAC report uh, and whether uh, they use information uh, that was for the hotel or for this project. Again, I have a lot of concerns about the traffic study. Um, and then, like I've already mentioned, you know, I just have a lot of concerns about the company itself um, with the, uh, you know, the, the criminally convicted uh, executives of this company and also uh, their fines for um, environmental and uh, safety issues just last month. Uh, but there's obviously there's a lot more um, issues that I have in here, um, but I'm going to have this on the record for, uh, for our defense. Thank you. Thank you. And every city council will be getting a copy of that, too. Okay, so then we go to Councilor Roy. Yeah, I just want a clarification, Mr. President, if I could. A no vote will defeat this. this we'll do that at the end, okay, to clarify in case nobody will, will make a mistake. We're going to do that last. Councilor Lopez. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councilor Dobas, for your work on this. I'd like to address a few things. Number one, I'd like to address uh, in the letter that we got uh, from pilot, um, they claim that this would be an unlawful denial. Um, and my question is on what grounds? That claim has no weight. Um, there is nothing unlawful about us exercising our discretion. There's no shortage of truck stops in that area. Um, and 
I wholeheartedly support the residents of Ward 6 in this. I concur with Councillor Dobas that traffic is already an issue, uh, public safety is an issue. We as a council don't have to grant a license. This, that's the purpose of our role here. Discretion is the purpose of our role. Um, it says may, not shall, and uh, I'm very familiar with the difference in those two words. Uh, may means we get to decide. Shall means we must. There is nothing here that says we must. Uh, if us exercising our discretion means that you're going to bring suit against us, bring it. Um, I'm not going to be intimidated to do what is right and represent the best interests of the members of our community. Uh, my job is to do what's best for the city and our residents. That's all of our job. Our job is not to cave to the intimidation tactics of a, of a corporation like Pilot, um, which is already proving to not be the best of neighbors here in the city because uh, the reality is that a thousand page binder the day before uh, a vote as an intimidation tactic doesn't, isn't very neighborly to me. Um, and some of this actually reminds me of what we went through with Silverbrick with some last minute requests of this kind. And I stood on the same side with Silverbrick as a corporation. I'm not, my job is not to protect the interests of the corporation, it's to protect the interests of the city. Um, so we're, here we are, plenty of residents have spoken up about uh, how you've already proven to not be a great neighbor. Um, this last minute binder is not going to sway me. I'm going to vote no tonight. Thank you very much. All right, all right. Thank you. Is there uh, Councillor Costello? I just want to briefly thank Councillor Dobas for his hard work. Uh, in regards to this issue and protecting the safety of his residents that are in Ward 6, especially in regards to road safety. I had heard a lot about the pilot truck stop in Surbridge, so my daughter and I took a ride out there, and it's nothing like your location. There's only two lanes on this pilot truck stop road it runs parallel to Route 84, but there's no other real massive development on that road. It's almost like a country road. So it's an entirely different location than the location that we're talking about off this particular exit. So thank you for your hard work, and thank you for your conscious effort in regards to road safety because that has become a very major issue in this city. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone else for public input? Concert Tillotson. I think we've heard enough. I'm ready to vote. Okay, well, you know what? We're gonna let everybody, all the city councilors make their point. Okay. Um, anyone else? Concert Libri. Yes, and uh, you know, I want to thank Councillor Dobaz for uh, representing his clients, his uh, residents, I'm sorry. Uh, he was with me last year when we had the Aldenville uh, that was brought up tonight, Cumberland Farms. Uh, there was a lot of issues there, and they're the same reasons uh, that, you know, I heard tonight over and over, you know, traffic. Um, you know, we have a city uh, that just seems to increase in traffic, increase in cars, and increase in trucks. Uh, and I'm going to be brief. Uh, public safety is a, a big issue I have there with, with not only vehicles against trucks, vehicles with trucks, it's foot traffic. People are going to want to go to the convenience store. They're going to go across the street. Um, you know, th there's the air pollution that was brought up. The tank concerns, I don't think it's been tested. We have one other uh, tank in Sturbridge, uh, you know, and it's in, you know, a remote area. Uh, the public doesn't want it, uh, and you know, important also is the ward councilor doesn't want it, and he represents his people, so uh, I'm not going to vote for it tonight. Thank you. <laughs> councilor Roy. I'll be very brief. If I lived up in that area, I wouldn't want another truck stop either. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, anybody here? Anybody on Zoom? Councillor McAuliffe or Councillor Brooks? Do you have a say? You want to say anything? Yeah, just one more thing. If I was advised by Attorney Garvey today that if we did deny this uh, application tonight, Councillor Dobas would in fact have to read all of the reasons for denial into the record. I just want to be very clear about that. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else for public input? 
Seeing none, I would like to speak. So if it's the will of the board, uh, I would like to say a few words if I can. Sure. Roll call, please. <laughs> For me to say something, we have to have a roll call. <laughs> Thank you. President Laflamme. Abstain. <laughs> Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Abstain. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Okay. Penny at Costello. Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I just want to say, I'm gonna, uh, very quickly, I'm, I'm going to agree uh, uh, wholeheartedly with everybody, but Consul Lopez made a good point of what she, she presented tonight, and I agree 100% with what she said, and, uh, and I'm going to leave it at that, and let's take a vote. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call, please. Uh, one question. Uh, can you verify the roll call? A yes vote will... Approve the permit. A no yes, vote, vote will approve deny. the permit. A no vote will deny the permit. Everybody got that? Yep. Roll call. President Laflamme. No. Roy. No. Tillotson. No. Zabrowski. No. McAuliffe. Abstain. Brooks. Abstain. Lopez. No. Valkyr. No. Krampitz. No. Dobis. No. Labrie. No. Pinia Costello. No. Ten, no. And a motion uh, is denied. To abstention. Let us finish, please. Let us finish. Guys, if we can just finish uh, the pilot when we still have more to do, okay? Okay. So Thank you. item number 16, we have an unfavorable report from the license committee for an application for a gas storage license at 357 Burnett Road for 48000 for 12,000 tanks of above ground storage and 40,000 underground storage. Applicant Chick Chickabee Inn, Inc. Councillor Brooks. Motion that the order be received and approved this evening with conditions. Motion made and second that the uh, committee report be received and approved this evening. On the motion. On the motion, it's we've discussed it at length. And this again is consistent with the motion that had been made in subcommittee and a, a yes vote will approve, a no vote will defeat. Thank you. Any other comments? Concert Krampitz. Just to clarify. Well, I'll be clarifying it. He I'll be report, but we're voting yes or no on the I'll license. clarify it. Okay, I just want to be sure of that. And Thank attorney, you. I'm correct. A yes vote will approve it, a no vote will deny it. Correct. Again, a yes vote will approve it, a no vote will deny it. Roll call, please. President Laflamme. No. Roy. No. Tillotson. No. Zagorowski. No. McAuliffe. Abstain. Brooks. Abstain. Lopez. No. Valkyr. No. Krampitz. No. Dobis. No. Labrie. No. Pinia Costello. No. Ten no, two abstentions. And the motion is denied. Okay. We're going to take a we're going to take oh, a two minute recess. Can we read into the record the reasons before we recess? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we have to read them into the record. You want to read them into the record? Right. So if he wants to submit that record, that written, submit, you got to read them into the record. Yeah, I gave you my. Um, oh, they're right there. Yeah. This is going to be a long. Uh, Just say my reasons are summarized in this letter dated. Okay, folks, if we can, we need to finish the, this pilot one. It is not finished yet. We have to read it into the record. So we got to be able to understand it being recorded. Thank you. Concert Dobaz will read into the record in a moment. Folks, if we can bring it out into the hallway, uh, we have to finish. Councilor Dobaz has to read it into the record, please. Go ahead, Councilor Dobaz. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'll try to be as brief as I can. Uh, this document is titled uh, Stop Pilot Truck Stop. 
Uh, I'm just going to read it as quickly as I can. Uh, hundreds of residents suggested public record reasons for denial offered for adoption by city councilors voting to deny license. There is nothing arbitrary or legal, unsupportable about denying this license. Denial is the only result of thoughtful, legally required consideration for at least the following reasons, most of which come directly from uh, Bo Ditch's litigation threat binder that actually approves denial is required here. No guarantee of license, no prior license to pilot, license not transferable. Number one, license is, is discretionary, otherwise uh, would follow an application and hand a clerk and they would issue. The language of Chicopee's licensing provision, specifically 188-14 reads, licenses may be granted, not shall. Otherwise, uh, why are we here? Are you just figureheads and wasting your time listening to residents' concerns and agonizing over these decisions? No, this is your decision and your choice to say no, if not in the city's interest. Read, pi read pilot's binder covers special permit. They admit this license is the equivalent of a special permit under Mass General Law 40A is discretionary. 188-20A service station license is premised on prior storage license, so that makes both discretionary. That capacity and your ability to make decisions for Chickabee is worth fighting for. You have the right and obligation to stand up to pilots trying to force this uh, down our throats. 188-20D reads, this license is granted to the petitioner only. Any subsequent person, firm, or corporation must make application, therefore, prior to the commencement of operations. License is not transferable. There is no prior license to pilot. Uh, See page three of the uh, Bowditch uh, Exhibit 5. Uh, independently, any non-transferable prior license to different applicant was based on cars only as made clear in the 2018 minutes already of record. It expressly promised no trucks. It could never serve as a basis for truck stop like this one. Otherwise, every local gas station could be used to house a fuel depot like you see across from O'Brien's Corner or ports like Boston. Huge million round plus industrial towers uh, and you would have no say about it. Pilot can't force you to have risk granting the license not defensible and against voters, huge safety issues, volume, storage type, internal traffic mess. Uh, so number seven, should tell pilot no company or lawyer has the right or power to bully you or force you in ignoring your common sense. This isn't an auto, automobile service station, it's a truck stop adding 700 uh, plus vehicle trips a day. Uh, as much as defending a denial here might cost the city, it pales in comparison to the cost of the, few, of the full traffic impact to our local economy. Just one injured child, one massive or even minor fuel spill and cleanup, or the health impact of the already abnormally high asthma levels already from Monsanto, Westover Air Force Base, and the Chicopee Industrial Complex, from hundreds if not thousands of added uh, idling trucks, were September to May, waiting to fuel while eating, not to mention the cost of suit from residents challenging any vote to approve the license. Uh, number nine, safety, abnormally large volume of fuel storage. Ten, above ground storage is outside normal practice in Massachusetts. Only one other similar ever allowed in Mass, and that is much more isolated in the uh, location Mass Pike and Sturbridge. Design clearly violates basic chippy requirements 188-20F and G and K. That clerk must have unobstructed view and no parking between clerk and fueling, and fueling can't obstruct vehicular or pedestrian traffic. Uh, this uh, violates all three. <clears throat> Uh, number 12, defective traffic assessment, old data, 2017-2013, and demonstrably incorrect data that they knew about. Uh, 13, companies lack of candor and apparent deception of this council, uh, mass DOT and MEPA consideration, uh, relied on old data. Uh, 14, video evidence that was submitted uh, and of record of the massive existing truck volume, uh, not even including school buses or uh, coming area projects. Uh, 15, recipients have presented professional engineering testimony from uh, Kin Hazavarshan, PhD, UMass, uh, licensing and uh, written opinion countering pilot assessment is on the public record, exposing its multiple massive and critical, critical deficiencies and pilot's deception in that regard. And as further supported by the Residence Council letter, uh, August 8th, 2022, this is of record just to start. Uh, 16, serious concern about whether SPRAC report was properly and fully considered for this project uh, and not the hotel, which was considered to use in which meeting and all associated communications. Residents' public records request well in advance was delayed, uh, but not producing clearly relevant documents before this meeting was required by law and instead not producing any base on the idea that, might, that some might be privileged. This is, uh, excuse me, obfuscation and a violation of public record law and unjustifiable, suggesting that there might be significant behind the scenes valid concerns, just like the solicitor's demissive approach to our concerns of quid pro quo uh, pay and play, uh, pay to play tactics by the developer um, with at least one counselor. Uh, other counselors were not sure. Uh, anyone else received any payment? Uh, 17, the facts prove that Pilot is a bad and irresponsible and untrustworthy uh, corporate neighbor. Uh, I'm not going to read through this, it's the uh, issues I already submitted with the articles. Um, let's see. 
18, with all of these queer reasons not to grant the license, I submit the council uh, could certainly be sued if it caves to pilots' threats and grants the license. Also, defending a no vote, denying a license is far easier and more likely to succeed if there is litigation. Residents' council doesn't need to threaten to sue the city council. Looking at the facts outlined in the public process and above will lead you to your own conclusion. 19, on top of that, a period number of reasons residents could sue, directly challenge uh, a vote granting the license. Uh, and there's a, a, a list here. Number 20, while we may only hear from a handful of residents on many points before limiting further on that point, the council must consider the level of others sharing that perspective. Resident redundancy is not irrelevant, reiterates a number of folks concerned about a particular point and goes directly to the weight of that point and its importance. There is a difference between one person's concern and 300 residents stating the same thing and warrants different consideration. 21, also given the number of citizens so vehemently opposed to this project, as we have seen in many meetings and in the petition with hundreds of signatures, over 200, uh, and for the very legitimate reasons we just went through, I uh, expect any councilor who might be in favor of this project should be concerned about being unseated. And 22, for these reasons, at the very least, the council should deny the license applications here. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this report you're returning is, is for both licenses, correct? Yes. Okay, should we need a roll call? Okay, that's, uh, you're all set, Derek, with uh, your denials, reasons? Okay, seeing that, we're gonna take a fight. We can take our break now, right? We're going to take a five minute break. Okay. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy Tillotson. No. Huh? Are we going to have a quorum? We have two online. Yeah, you don't have. Uh, we have two on there. Okay. Zigorowski. He's oh, already the chair. Gone. McAuliffe. Abstain. <laughs> Brooks. No. Lopez. She's on. They're taking them. Valkyr? Yes. Rampitz? Yes. Dovis? Yes. Fabri and Piniac Costello? Yes. One, two, three, four. We've got five yes, two no, the rest out of chair. You need seven. <laughs> well. So we're still in session. Yeah, well, let me go get them. Tape is rolling. Yeah. Right, needs Fantastic. Yeah, she's a lawyer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Can we go? There, there wasn't a, a quorum or a majority to, to do it. Because you need seven, and there was only five. So we're, we're sitting here. Oh, I'm not. <laughs>
Here's order number two. Please. Order that the sum of $1,250.44 being hereby appropriate to the following named account, city clerk's salary account for out of rank. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Councilor Lopez. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and seconded that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, the mayor explained today that this was uh, an employee who has left and a new employee is a, uh, at a different rank given to the union. So this is just a simple appropriation of $1,250.44 uh, to account for that. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Balkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Piniac Costello? Out of chair. 11 yes, one out of chair. And the motion passes. Or that the sum of $11,000 being hereby appropriate to the following named account, golf special account for purchase of equipment. Set amounts be taken from the available funds in a golf pro shop inventory revolving account. Councilor Zigorowski. A motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and seconded that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion, please. On the motion, uh, we're transferring $11,000 from the golf revolving account for purchasing of equipment. There's a turbine blower that they use. It's uh, starting to see its days. There's no trade-in value, but we can use it on a minimal thing as a backup, possibly. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Blitzen? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Piniac Costello? 12, yes. <laughs> and the motion passes. Or that the sum of $21,700 being hereby appropriate to the following named account, DBW Park Special Account for Williams Park Project. Set amounts to be taken from the available funds in the stabilization fund. Councilor Balakir. Uh, motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and seconded that the order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, um, the uh, city has received a proposal from Talia Bond to prepare a downgrade in property status opinion on behalf of the city in the amount of $21,700. And this is uh, concerning some contamination above uh, Williams Park. And uh, the hope is um, by having this study, uh, this is going to give everybody a better assessment of uh, what the situation is. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? No. Labrie? Yes. Piniac Costello? No. 10 yes, 2 no. And the motion passes. Or that the City Council accept the additional FY20 SAMHSA Police Drug Addiction Response Team Grant in the amount of $8,000 from the City of Northampton. Said grant is to be used for decreasing the impacts of substance abuse disorders and opiate overdose, overdose, overdose <laughs> fatalities for people and families, and it's accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Councilor Tillotson. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages upon a written recommendation of the motion mayor. Motion made and seconded that the order be received, passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor on the motion. This will help, uh, help the police department handle the, the drug situation, and uh, I think it's good. It, we, it always intrigues me that we, we're in, we're in in this with Northampton, it, it, it's kind of interesting that uh, the $8,000 runs through them, but I'll take it. I think it's a good thing, and I think it's going to help the substance abuse and then some of the disorders and give the police department some money that they need to, to deal in this area. And what we know about, what we hear about, the amount of drugs that are coming in from other places now into this country, it, we certainly need to have as much money and much, as much defense as we can possibly muster. It, it's becoming a serious problem, and I, I believe, in this country. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. Or that the City Council accept a donation of poker chips from the Police Supervisors and Patrolmen's Union, Police Department. These chips are to be used 
at the bike rodeo and will be handed out by police officers to any child seen wearing a helmet while riding their bike. Said poker chip donation has a value of $495 and is accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A and one half. Councilor Labrie. Uh, motion that the mayor's order be received and the donation accepted tonight. Motion made and seconded that the mayor's order be received and the donation accepted tonight. On the motion. On the motion, uh, these are going to reward uh, children uh, who have their helmets on, who are uh, involved in, uh, we're having a bike rodeo. We had one in Chicopee Center, and uh, they're going to have some other ones. Uh, but it just gives the, you know, the child, hey, I got something for wearing my helmet. Um, I would have thought maybe an um, ice cream cone uh, certificate, but um, <laughs> the uh, poker chip is a good, good way to do it, and I appreciate that the uh, superiors um, union and uh, you know police officers uh, did that. So uh, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Any other comments? Roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Borowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Crampets. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Piniac Costello. Yes. 12, yes. And the motion passes. Or that the City Council accept the attached list of donations in the amount of $155 to the Chicopee Public Library. Said donations are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A. Councilor Roy. Yeah, motion that the mayor's order be received and no donations accepted this evening. Motion made and second that the mayor's order be, uh, be approved this evening and a donation accepted. On the motion. On a motion, uh, this is a donation uh, for $125 from Reverend Jonathan Tetherly and Walter and Marianne Isham for $30 uh, to go to the Chicopee Public Library. And thank you very much, and hopefully we can send out a thank you letter. Um, I'll make sure that's done. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Crampets? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Finiac Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. Next we have the Chapter 7 Ordinance Revisions. Councilor uh, Crampets. Motion that the order be received, uh, take its first reading, and be sent to the Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. Motion made and, and second that the mayor's order be received, take its first reading, and sent to Ordinance for a public hearing. On the motion. Uh, yes, this is basically to adjust the uh, salary of a, uh, a generalist in the uh, Human Resources Department. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Crampets? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Piniac Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. An order authorizing the City Council in accordance with the powers granted to it by the City Charter, Section 230 3 of the Chicopee City Code and Mass General Law, Chapter 83, Section 25 and 27, to order the construction of sewer infrastructure on or near the area of Bluebird Acres Mobile Home Park on the streets and property identified in the attached final order for assessment of a betterment and outlined in said order. Councilor Costello. Thank you. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and seconded that the order be received and passed through on the written recommendation of the mayor. Um, I'm gonna allow um, Councillor Dobas to explain what this all about. He's worked hard in regards to this particular project, and this is something that's going to benefit this particular area. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Dobas. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, yeah, yeah, just to kind of briefly explain here, uh, a couple years ago, um, the state of Massachusetts failed uh, the uh, septic system at the uh, Bluebird Acres Mobile Home Park, which is the largest mobile home park in the city of Chicopee. Um, and so Mayor Koss and his administration uh, they did a public-private partnership deal uh, where the city would pay half the cost of, uh, to hook up Bluebird Acres Park to the sewers, to city sewers. Uh, the city would pay half the cost and the owner of the Bluebird Acres would pay half the cost and, right, and he would share some of that cost with his tenants through the use of a you know, higher rent. Uh, and so um, the, the, the uh, terms of those agreement is 50-50. Um, th there was a lot of moving parts to this. Uh, th they ended up hooking up Bluebird Acres Mobile Home Park to Ludlow, and then from Ludlow to Springfield. And uh, so now they're connected with Springfield's Bondi Island. Uh, and it was a very clever um, deal. 
and I, give, I actually give Costa's administration a lot of credit. Uh, it was very clever. He did a lot of work to help these people stay in their homes. W without this deal, this agreement, uh, a majority of these people would have, would have lost their homes. They would have had to go down to 35 uh, mobile home units, and there's, there's more than 200 units, so it would have been a significant uh, catastrophe, right? And the, the people in this park are, you know, majority living underneath the poverty line, uh, and a majority are elderly. Uh, so, um, you know, this uh, assessment, um, from my understanding, is part of that agreement. It's part of that construction uh, that's continuing to take place. Uh, and so I'm happy to see this uh, move forward. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Yeah. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Labrie? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Be it ordered that the mayor be authorized to lease 170 Grove Street, including editing said lease, a sample of which is attached as Exhibit A herein, and executing any necessary formalities in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 40, Section 15. Councilor McAuliffe. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on his written recommendation. Motion made and second that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation. Motion. Self-explanatory. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll. Call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Fabri? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. Be ordered that a portion of Grape Street in the city of Chicopee be discontinued in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 82, Section 21. Councillor Brooks. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Thank you. Motion made and second that the order be received, passed through all stages on a written recommendation of the mayor. On the motion. On the motion, this is, uh, has been appraised and it was valued at a very minimal amount of money and this will allow the project to concede. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing, oh, Councillor Balakir. Yes, yeah, thank you. Just a quick comment. Uh, I think this is a project that's well overdue <laughs> because this wall is really, a, the retaining wall is in really tough shape. Yeah. And I think this is the prudent way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Roll call, please. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Borowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. yes. Brooks? Brooks? Yes. Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 12 <clears throat> yes. And the motion passes. In order that a portion of Grape Street previously discontinued be abandoned in accordance with the city code, section 28-9, and the mayor be authorized to convey this parcel to the abutter in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, chapter 40, section 15. Councilor Lopez. Motion that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. Motion made and seconded that the order be received and passed through all stages on the written recommendation of the mayor. This just follows the previous motions. Same thank, record, same course. Th thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call, please. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. Order that the City Council accept the attached list of monetary donations in the amount of $4,625. Any in-kind donations with estimated value of $9,846. Said donations are for National Night Out event, and they are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53A and 53A and one half. Councilor Zygorowski. Motion that the mayor's order be received and all the donations uh, received and uh, accepted. Motion made a second that the mayor's order be received and passed through all stages on a written recommendation and then all donations accepted this evening on the motion. Uh, Self-explanatory, uh, it was for the National Night Out, which was a great event. Then we thank all the donations that were given to us and we have the list attached. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Obis. Yes. L Labrie. Yes. Pinia Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. Or that the City Council accept the donations in the amount of $4,926.
and 60 cents to the Chigabee Senior Center said donations are for senior meals for the month of July 2022 and are accepted in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Councilor Balaclair. A uh, motion that the mayor's order be received past the wrong stages and written recommendation of the mayor and that the donations be accepted this evening. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, this is um, pretty Second standard. This is um, uh, right monies right that uh, were coming into this Chickpea Senior Center with donations for senior meals for the month of July in the amount of $4,926.60. Thank you. Yeah. By the way, I second, second the motion. Second He's got, yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? Please call the roll. President Laflam. Yes. Oh, I'm up saying. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagrowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Thank you. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Alkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Finiak Costello. Yes. 11 yes, one abstention. Bob. Motion passes. Okay. We have a favorable passes. report from the Ordinance Committee. For, to add to the following in schedule, parking prohibited between signs, Thomas Street. Councilor Tillotson. <laughs> Motion that the <coughs> ordinance and report be received and to take a second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. Motion made and second the ordinance committee report be received, take a second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. On the motion. On the motion, this is the lady that came in here most every meeting or several meetings with a wheelchair and uh, she asked to have a no parking sign placed in front of her house. Evidently, there's some issues with her driveway. She, she does need an ambulance. The last time I, we, I, I dealt with her, she was in the hospital. Uh, we, the ordinance committee felt that this was a, a necessary thing and a short term thing. If something should happen to her, uh, then we would file an order to remove the uh, no parking sign in front of her house. We, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Handicap Commission and the uh, engineer did not go along with a uh, <clears throat> handicap sign in front of her house. So uh, this was the alternative that, that we came up with. Uh, we've seen this woman come in w w a month after a month and you know, asking for some relief so she would be able to get an ambulance in front of her house. Well, nobody's gonna give a ticket to an ambulance that, that comes to, and, and, and picks her up and takes her to the hospital. That's the rationale. It's unusual, it's an unusual situation. But if something should happen there, and then, then, the, then the council would uh, remove the no parking and, le and then parking would be allowed there. But uh, from, from several, several counselors visited that location, and there, there was always parked, somebody was always parked in front of her house. And uh, she would have a difficult time uh, f getting the ambulance in her driveway. And therefore, she felt that uh, the best thing that was offered would, would be to have, have a no parking sign in front of her property. Uh, and so that an ambulance could pull in there. It would be, it would, would, would be available. Uh, and uh, it's an unusual situation uh, but this is the solution that we, we came up with. She's came in here several different times asking for help. And uh, we felt that uh, the, the counselor from that ward felt also that this was the, the best way to go. So that's the reason for it. I know there was some opposition to it from the lady who's just bouncing around out there. But uh, uh, that was the reason why it's, it's an unusual situation. I admit that. But we didn't know what other delimit, delimit to use to, to make sure that an ambulance could get in front of her house. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments? Uh, Councilor Lopez. Um, so there was some opposition from a lady who was not bouncing around, but who was, you know, speaking to the council regarding her own concerns. Right, um, and so, I, no, right. if you have something to say, you can say it through the chair. We're not going back and forth today. Um, <laughs> and so her concerns were that the sign were actually going to prevent people from parking in that area. Her concerns were also that the signs are not in front of the house. So although we have heard from the other women who proposed for this handicap sign, who we then wanted to do no parking signs, um, we've heard from her multiple times, that doesn't make what she feels more important than the resident who also expressed today uh, her issues with the no parking signs. So the resident today spoke about how the signs were going to uh, force people to park at a different 
part of the street, which would in turn make it a public safety issue because it wouldn't allow for folks to park closer to their homes. And then that meant that the children, because there's no sidewalks, that the children would have a hard time as they're, they use the street like most children do to bike, scooter, to walk because there's no sidewalks. And so that creates a public safety concern. I, what I will also say is that I understand that the woman who has come in here multiple times wanted a handicap sign. This is also something that the, a counselor proposed as um, an alternative to the handicap sign that was not uh, granted. And so I, what I also say is the woman who came in here multiple times didn't even come in here asking for a no parking sign. So the, the, the comments from the resident that came today um, do hold a lot of weight in my book uh, because it's a different side to the coin. It's not like this the resident that came today would have known from the beginning to come and oppose these no parking signs. These no parking signs were offered as an alternative. Um, so that does put me at least, it makes me rethink how I feel about this issue um, because this these were concerns that were not able to be expressed before because some of this was done kind of behind the scenes in a way to uh, help that resident, but also we, we now see that it also causes some issues. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Councilor DeWaz. Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, as I appreciate all the work that the at-large guys put into this, but um, I, I kind of agree with Councilor Lopez. Is, is there any way we could uh, uh, delay this to another meeting just because Councilor Corshane isn't, isn't here? Uh, are we able to, to delay this a, a meeting? I mean, I know, I know that there's been a lot of problems with this street. Um, but I, that's just my suggestion uh, that we delay it just one more meeting. I mean, uh, the, the ward councilor is not here. You can, you, can, um, you can make a motion to postpone it, right? You can make a mo po uh, to postpone it. We could take a roll call on that one. You, wanna uh, make a, you have to make a motion to yeah, postpone. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make a motion to, to uh, postpone the call of the chair of ordinance, please. Okay. I have the last word, if I may. You can have all the words you want, but he, he there's a uh, motion on the floor. This has been postponed. Oh, oh, Jim, Jim, hold on a minute. I have a uh, motion made in second that we postpone to the call of the chair item number 14, I believe it was? 17. 17, 17. on the agenda. I just got a second it, Jim. You're all set. Yeah, I, I would like to defeat that. We've had it postponed once before. Mr. Cushane came in with a huge picture of how this was going to work. Uh, and uh, he, he, he agreed that this was the, the best way to go uh, temporarily until uh, something would happen to her, then we would take the sign down. We've been going back and forth on this over for, for three or four months now. And, and, and postponing it's not gonna solve anything uh, because we thought we had the solution, he thought we had the solution. Well, you were at the meeting, I think, Councilor yeah, Dobas, you saw the huge picture he had. You know, it is an un, it is an unusual situation. There's no question about it. But uh, the handicap commission turned down the handicap sign, and and uh, we thought this would be a fair way to go. And and if something would happen with her, then we would uh, uh, take the file in order to re, to take the signs down. But uh, I I I think postponing it. It's been been posted once. It's been posted a couple of times. I just think we ought to let this go through um, and let's see how it works. If it doesn't work, then Kushen can file another order himself. But I hate, I hate to postpone it when he's not here because it's already been postponed once. Thank you. I yeah. would appreciate it if we could let this one go through and if someone next meeting wants to file an order that to uh, take it away, then fine. But uh, at least we've... We shall have some relief in the interim while, while we're figuring out what we're going to do there. Maybe, maybe Kushane will file another order for our handicap sign, you know. But that won't help the parking situation because you can't park there unless you've got a handicap plate. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, uh, if the residents on the street don't have a handicap plate, they can't park there anyway. So it, it's, it's not as simple as it sounds. Okay. So I hope that we'll let this go through and uh, let the counselor and the board uh, decide if what, what he wants to do based on the, the discussion that we had this evening. Thank you. Councilor Lopez. I understand that this has been postponed multiple times. We've actually been going through this for months with this. Uh, however, given the resident comments from today, 
I think this opens up a different side of the issue that we had not yet considered, especially given the fact that this was first a handicap sign, and then it turned into a no parking sign, and no judgment on it turning into a no parking sign. That's what the ward counselor thought was best at the time, and that's fine. However, now that we have on the floor, a person has come to us, a resident has come to us with concerns, I think that that merits us re-looking at the situation. If this means we have to postpone 20 times, I don't care how many times we have to postpone until we've looked at every issue. It also doesn't make sense for us to say, let's just let it go through, and then if we have to come back and undo it, we undo it, when we can just postpone now, deal with the issue, and then whatever we decide after actually looking at the issue holistically, if we decide to put it forth, fine, but at least we've given it a full opportunity at being looked at from all angles. It does not hurt us to postpone this, but it will hurt us if we then have to undo it and it takes months, and what if a little kid dies because we figure out that after doing a traffic study or whatever, Whatever, that there is a, a large amount of kids who bike there and someone takes a, a turn there because there wasn't enough parking and that one parking spot shy, a little kid dies. I would much rather do the work in advance and figure out if this is an issue that we need to uh, change our position on before a, a tragedy happens or before we waste more time. Therefore, I support postponing it. Thank you. Concert Krampitz. Yeah, um, I was going to suggest... Uh, rather than it be to the call of the chair, which sounds like it would go back to the ordinance committee, we're back to our regular schedule of meetings. So in two weeks, we will have another city council meeting. So my recommendation, if, and I can put in the form of a motion if somebody wants to, but we have a really matter, first. would be to postpone it to the, our meeting in two weeks. That way, Councilor Corshane can have a chance to review it. And then if he comes back and says, I want to go forward with the no parking, yeah. we can deal with it then. Or if he says, no, I want to kill it that night, and in the meantime he files another order, you know, that's fine. But I think you know, at least postponing it to our next full city council meeting, it doesn't drag it out, but yet it gives Councilor Corshain some time to, to listen to what was that public input and then go from there. So that's just okay, my so, suggestion. So. All right. So... Councilor uh, Delbaz, if you were uh, entertain a motion, um, a friendly motion to uh, Councilor Krampitz, he could po you can postpone it to the two meetings from now. Give him her time, him time to meet with her and just talk about it. And we could bring it back on the floor. We yeah, do just, not. That's a fair we do amendment. Not, we do not have to send it back to ordinance. That's, that's a friendly amendment. Yeah. All right, we'll take that for now. But right, do I have to take a roll call now? So that would be the 20th. Yes. Right. Okay. Councillor Costello. Thanks. I agree with uh, Councillor Lopez. September this 20th. is something that has to be researched thoroughly. You can't keep bouncing back and forth. We need as much positive and negative information in regards to anything that's proposed. So postponing this is a lot of common sense. The question I have to, through the chair, to Councillor Lopez is two weeks, or actually not even two weeks, it's only... Um, 12 days mm -hmm. because we're on mm -hmm. September 8th. The meeting is September 20th, so it's less than two weeks. Councilor Lopez, through the chair, would that be enough time? I, I don't even think I'm able to make that fair assessment because the reality is that Councilor Crochet is the one who needs to meet with a resident. Um, and if Councilor Crochet decides that they want to have an open meeting about this or whatever, like, I mean, it might just need to get postponed again um, at that meeting. So I, I think I'll defer that to Councilor Crochet to figure out if in, if in a week and a half at this point, um, if that was enough time or if he would like to postpone further. But I am, I'm, I'm, I am, um, uh, in support of a two-week, uh, at least postponement for now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. We're going to stay in order here. I'm going to run the meeting. Councilor uh, Dobaz is next. Thank you. I'll, I'll be very brief. I just wanted to say, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be a troublemaker or anything, uh, Councilor Tillotson. All right. Uh, I support Councilor Corshain. You know, I support the Ward Alderman and these kind of things. All I'm saying is, you know, he is not here. There's a new resident opposing it. I, I think Councillor Corshane, we don't know if, if the new resident would change his mind, right? And that's all, I don't think it would hurt to stall 12 days. Mm -hmm. no, you know, I, 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 I mean, I understand that he put hey, a lot of work in. We're not going to talk between the chairs. Talk to well, the, I'll, I'll, the I'll be very brief, board, please, Mr. President. Not back and forth. Well, to the president. You know, I'll be very brief. I, I appreciate all of the hard work the at large guys put into this, that Councillor Corshane put into this. I support Councillor Corshane. Ultimately, he has to live there. But all I'm saying is, we don't know if. 
new residents would affect his opinion. That's all I'm trying to say, and that's why I support stalling it. But I've, you know, I, I, that's all I'm trying to say. Thank you. All right, I, I, I get it. I get your point. Okay, we have next was Councilor Krampus. You, uh, Councilor Bree was next. Yeah, I originally was, you know, f not for the postponement. Um, we had, uh, you know, a couple of meetings. I went down to that neighborhood, and we're only losing one spot. And I thought the, you know, issue was very dire about the woman needing to get uh, to and from, uh, you know, cancer treatments. Um, she has cancer, and the ambulance uh, could not pick her up near her driveway. Uh, I just thought it was dire at that time. Uh, if, if somebody can promise me that this would get corrected in, in two weeks, I, I won't vote no, but uh, at the time when we decided this, uh, we decided that this needed to be done now and it was going to be a temporary thing until this woman got better and uh, we would revisit it at that time. But, you know, two weeks ago when we had our meeting, I know it was dire that she needed to get picked up and she wasn't getting picked up. So uh, that's what I got to say about that. So, thank you, uh, Councilor Tillerson. You're next now. Could we, we? I have no objection if we postpone it till the next meeting, and let Councilor Fouchet know in the meantime what's going on. I think that's fair, rather than right. run it back to ordinance because my ordinance is going to be uh, not for three or four hours. I look at the numbers of things that are going in there, uh, and uh, if. If your motion uh, is to postpone it for till the next meeting, uh, and hopefully Mr. Cushan will be there and we'll we'll go from there. All right. The time there won't be there won't be any signs up. It'll it'll stay the way it is for t for, for that length of time. Okay. Uh, anybody on Zoom? Okay, well, oh, wait. Hold on, you? guys. Hey, hey, hey. Go, Shane, did you want to say something? Nope. Okay, Councilman McAuliffe, do you want to say anything? No. Okay, so the motion on the floor is was uh, to send it to the, postpone to our next meeting, which would be? September 20th. September 20th. 20th. Okay, that's what's on the floor today. Roll call, please. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Piniac Costello. Yes. Twelve. Yes. In a motion passed. Now the, the 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 resident can meet with uh, Councillor um, Kushane and deal uh, with her issues. Thank you very much. Next motion. We have a favorable report from the ordinance committee. Be it ordered by the city council. Hereby amends code. Amend code section 17-1A personnel by deleting 17 sergeants and inserting 19 sergeants and deleting and special officers as may from time to time be appointed. Councilor Tillotson. Motion that the ordinance committee report be received. The ordinance take a second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained. Motion made and second the ordinance committee report take a second and final reading and be enrolled and ordained on the motion. On the motion, oh, this was a request from the police department. Uh, we agreed that they're trying to provide more safety throughout the city, particularly in Willamancet. They'd like to see more done there. So the council agreed and uh, so did the ordinance committee. Thank you, any other comments? Anybody on Zoom? Just nope, nobody. Uh, roll call, please. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Shillitson. Yes. Zagrowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Penea Costello. Yes. Twelve yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee. Be it ordered that the Ordinance Committee meet to discuss issues on Nye Street. The Ordinance Committee met and we motion. Oh, can I make make a motion? Motion made it. Jim, make a motion. Make a motion to uh, receive. And placed on file. Motion made and seconded that the order be received and placed on file. On the motion. On the motion, oh, we had a discussion about it, and uh, uh, the building the inspector was there, and our attorney was there, and they, they both indicated that, that there was nothing at this particular time that we could do about it. It was a civil matter and, and not a city matter at this time. Councilor Costello. Thank you, Councilor Tillotson. It's in regards to a playscape that's in an apartment complex that was put up and there's no ordinance to guide us in regards to playscapes. 
and there was a question of uh, visual privacy because the playscape was put up close to the people's house and bedroom. And now they have to invest a lot of money into privacy, fencing, curtains, things like that. So the law department has indicated that because there is no ordinances in regards to playscapes, there isn't, and there was a lot of research done on this, there's, a, there's nothing that can be done in regards to this particular jungle gym. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President? Oh, hold on, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, just, just super quick. I just want to thank Councillor Costello for her work on this issue. It was kind of a complicated issue, and um, you know, I, I appreciate her looking into it, because this could happen in, in any of our wards. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Salkir? Yes. Rampitz? Not a chair. Dobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Penny at Costello? Yes. 11 yes, one out of chair. And the motion passes. A favorable report from the Ordinance Committee, be it order that the DPW install missing stop signs at the intersection of Old Lyman Road and Ludlow Road. Councilor Tillotson. Uh, motion to place on file. Motion made and second that the Ordinance Committee report be received and placed on file on the motion. On the motion, uh, the signs had already been up, put up uh, by the time that we uh, met on it, so that uh, there wasn't anything that we needed to do at this point. Uh, thank you very much. Also, if I could just inter thank you, Councillor Costello. Thank you, Councillor Tillerson. Also, there is a intersection there, and there was a question of whether or not there was missing signs to make it a four-way stop sign area, and. Um, there was a discussion about that, and they're going to leave it as, according to Doug Ellis, uh, an area with two stop signs and not four. Thank you, Councillor Tillotson. Thank you very much. Uh, roll call, please. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McCulloch. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Dobis. Yes. Mabry. Yes. Vinayak Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. A favorable report from the Ordinance Committee be it ordered that the Ordinance Committee meet to discuss public notifications on issues involving one-way streets. <coughs> motion that the Ordinance Committee report be received and uh, placed on file. Motion made and second that the, or the order public or well, which one is it? Ordinance Committee be report be received and placed on file on the motion. On the motion, well, we had a discussion about what uh, steps would be suggested that it would be taken, and it was my understanding that you were working on something, Mr. F Mr. President, in terms of one-way stops, so uh, uh, we placed ours on file. Uh, we talked about uh, notifying the police, to finding from, you know, working with the police department, the, the fire department, the, the, the Department of Public Works, and uh, figuring out who wanted to collect the signatures, either the the uh, counselor or the constituent or both, uh, and then decide whether you wanted to file an order or not. And that was some of the discussion that we had. And I know that with some of the discussion being taken, as you indicated uh, yep. at the meeting, uh, so it's still in, it's still, it's still in progress. Thank you. Uh, if it may, the board, if I could speak on this for one minute, please. Sure. We need a uh, roll, roll call, please. Yeah, President LaFlamme. Epstein. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Fez. Alkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Fabri. Yes. Finneac Costello. Yes. 12 yes. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, Councilor Tillotson. Uh, what, we, what we try to do, uh, Councilor Costello and myself, uh, we and Councilor um, Zagorowski Public Safety, we got to be, together with some department heads and asked them to come up with scenarios, and uh, I know uh, Councilor Tillerson had some the way they used to do it. So we're trying to merge all this together and come up uh, with a, uh, 
a template that the city could use for many things, not just one ways. Uh, it, we, it was also was talked about for uh, when they want to do closing of streets and notifications and how far do we go on streets. So that, uh, that's why I had this meeting with department heads and uh, they had three months to come back with their ideas and I'm going to be turning it, when we get those, we're going to turn those over to ordinance uh, so we have something to work with uh, Councilor Tillotson's uh, ordinance committee um, on this uh, matter. Because it was important, um, there's so many, there were so many people talking about this issue that it was really going just all different directions. So I think that listening to the department heads is what's going to help us. Councilor Costello. Thank you. I spoke with Count, uh, Attorney Dan Garvey in regards to public notifications in uh, when it regards to one-way streets. He indicated there is no state statute that says that you have to notify anybody. And there's nothing in our ordinance to indicate that we have to notify anybody. So this is something we have to tighten up and bite and button up so that we become more efficient in regards to notifications. Um, I agree with President Laflamme and I appreciate his support to become extremely transparent when it becomes to notifications. I'm also asking in regards to this um, is to uh, start training of new counselors and current counselors. This is something that I'm going to bring up at the next meeting, but I think this is a good time to introduce that, to make sure that everybody is properly trained and updated. Uh, in all professions, you have to take um, continuing education units, and I think it's good for the current counselors as well as new counselors to have some training in regards to how the council works, what the ordinances are, and what the different committees are. I'm gonna tell you something, that in the school department, that school committee receives training. Yeah, they just started that. Yeah, they started that not that long ago. And they did a, they actually, they did it, uh, I think in, December of 2021 is when they first started. And it's a great idea. Mr. Michael Pease was one of the ones that put the, the, um, the training manual together, along with, I believe, their attorney, Becky Bouchard, and an administrative assistant, Sarah Hoare. And I know that Mrs. Perrett is here. Uh, she went to the training on December in December of 2021. And it's very very uh, effective. But I, I think that as a new counselor that I am, I think it benefits not only me and others that once every two years we get training and we go through new ordinances, new statutes, things that will keep us updated. Thank you. Sorry it took so long. Thank you. You sure you're sorry? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Councillor, <laughs> Councillor Dobas. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry, too. I know it's late. I want to thank Councillor Costello for bringing this forward. Um, I'm glad we started discussions on this because, uh, you know, the, it, it is an issue, and I'll give you two big, the two biggest examples I can think of, right? The, the truck stop, the proposed truck stop we just voted on tonight, and, and, and Slate Road, right? The, the uh, 300 feet notification did not work for those issues, right? The truck stop, it, it, there's no residents directly uh, uh, budding that property, um, but yet it affected a lot of people. And uh, the same uh, with, um, with Slate Road. Now obviously this is specific to one-way streets that she's talking about, but this one-way street affects a lot of people and it's not clear to new counselors exactly who's notified uh, and, and, uh, and issues where it affects a lot of people. Uh, we need to be careful as a council uh, and, and, you know, how we get getting the word out. So thank you for bringing that conversation forward. Okay, this, this, this particular one is just on regarding one ways. And I know, I'm sorry we're not, for, for... We're not getting for, into training at this meeting right now. Yeah. Uh, we can bring that up later and then we can all have our, our say in that one. And that's why we need okay. training to we'll, understand what we're bringing up. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm trying to clarify that one. Thank you. Roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Yeah. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Falkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pinyak Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee. Be it ordered that the new directional signs be placed behind 
Oh, sorry, be placed at the bend of La Riviere Drive near 111 La Riviere Drive. Councilor Tillotson. Motion that the ordinance committee report be received and the, the ordinance placed on file. Motion, making, motion made and second that the orders committee report be received and placed on file on the motion. The motion, we, uh, when we had our meeting, uh, the, uh, uh, <coughs> the situation was already taken care of. Uh, the directional signs had already been placed on Liverware Street or Drive, so that uh, there really wasn't much for us to do at that meeting. Councillor Costello. The, um, the, thank you, Councillor Tillotson. The Chicopee DPW acted extremely fast on this. Yeah. In, a, in a matter of uh, days, the, uh, the directional signs were, were placed, and uh, they actually went uh, in a different direction. So I appreciate John Bollier and the DPW for working quickly, and uh, the residents uh, are happy that that was replaced sooner than later. Thank you. Um, I'd like to ask a question. Can I, I got to ask to talk, right, again? I have a concern about this. Um, if it's will aboard, I, I'd like to talk for one minute and ask a question on this. Um, roll call, please. President LaFlam. I'm saying. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagrowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Out of chair. Labrie, yes. Costello. Yes. Uh, yes. Out of chair. Thank you. Uh, I, I have a question is, uh, so we didn't do an ordinance. The signs were put up before the ordinance was done. I, I have a concern with that because we have other situations already that nothing should be done. Nothing should be done until an ordinance because we're putting the city in a liability situation if that's what's occurring. And I had a conversation with the DPW supervisor. Nothing should be done until an ordinance, is, a law is required. I, am I correct, Dan? Uh, I think generally speaking, you are absolutely correct. I'm not sure if these were just signs. Could you turn your mic on, please, Attorney Garvey? Oh, Garvey, your what mic's on. You are correct about that. Unfortunately, I'm confused. I thought these were just signs on a curve. That's what I'm trying to clarify. Yeah, yeah. Are yeah, these signs the in one way? You can only go one way on it? Not a one way. It's just, and Mr. Labrie was told, told me right away that the signs were immediately addressed. Um, there were signs that I believe there, according to the resident, there was a sign missing. So, and they replaced it. Right. Okay. I just want to make sure that yeah. all, all the signs are going through ordinance. Yeah, everything uh, for, was for the city. Okay. okay. Thank These you. Chevrons. Is that you know, like the arrow? The yeah. Sign yeah. The yeah. Chevrons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's not a one-way sign. It's just arrows. Thank you. Okay. Chevrons. All the chevrons. Thank you very much. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't we had the ordinance in place. Okay. Thank you. A roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zigorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. 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 Valkyr. Yes. Rampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Finiac Costello. Yes. Twelve yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable report from the Ordinance Committee to add to the following in schedule. Parking prohibited here to corner Edmund Street. Concert Tillotson. <clears throat> Motion that the ordinance can report be received. The ordinance take a second and final reading and be rolled and ordained, and I'll yield to Councillor Krampus. Motion made and second that the ordinance committee report be received, passed through all stages on, oh, I'm sorry, be rolled and ordained on the motion. Yep. Uh, Councillor who? I'll yield to Councillor Krampus. Councillor Krampus. Yeah, this was a uh, constituent request. Uh, they're having difficulty pulling in off of St. James Avenue onto Edmond Street. Uh, so after, you know, to not uh, inconvenience uh, some of the residents there, we put it on the side where the, uh, uh, the car wash is. So that way, uh, when people are pulling it off of St. James Avenue, if, if people aren't parked on both sides, uh, creating an a entry problem. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagrowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Make it brief. Yes. Strampets? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinia Costello? Yes. Oh, yes. And a motion passes. We are halfway there. <laughs> we have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for a special permit application under Chapter 275-9L3 for the purpose of renewal of a special permit granted on 8-11-2020 requesting relief from the following ordinances. 
from section 275-23, from section 275-D1C, 275-D32, 275-D3C, 275-D35, 275-D8. Councilor um, Balakir. Okay. All right. Um, motion that the uh, favorable zoning subcommittee report be received and the special permit be granted this evening with restrictions. Mo motion made and second that the zoning committee report special permit be approved this evening with restrictions on the motion. Okay. All right. There's uh, quite a bit to this. So um, this is a special permit application under Chapter 275-9, subsection L3, for the purpose of renewal of a special permit granted on 8-11-2020. This is a property located at 3852 Front Street. So there was a meeting, and um, the basically um, some of the restrictions are the applicant shall comply with all SPRAC requirements and comments as evidenced by written uh, comments from the Board of Directors of Planning. Um, and this is a permit to run with the land. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to vote on six waivers and then finally also number seven on the special permit. Okay, so, so we'll, we'll do each waiver first and then the permit. Correct. Okay, go ahead right. with waiver one. Okay, waiver, one, waiver number one from section 275. I need a motion. you got to do a motion. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Motion to approve. Okay, motion to approve. All right. Waiver number one. Waiver number one uh, from section 275-23 requiring restoration be completed within 12 months. The petitioner was delayed by insurance claim issues, legal issues involving tenant possessions and access to the damaged building and the building code enforcement. So we have to wait, uh, excuse me, we have to vote on this waiver. Uh, any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. 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 Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobitz? Yes. Fabri? Yes. Penny and Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Waiver, waiver two. two. Okay, motion to approve waiver number two. From section uh, 275 D1, subsection C, multifamily dwellings from 30,000 square feet to 19,199 square feet. Any other comments on waiver number two? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. 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 Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Labri? Yes. Vinia Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And waiver two is approved. All right. This is a motion for uh, number waiver number three for approval. Uh, from section uh, 275D, subsection 32, uh, front yard setback from 20 feet to 7.5 feet average. Okay, I know, okay, that's waiver number three. Waiver number three. Any other comments? Roll call, please. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Labri? Yes. Pinia Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Okay, motion to approve waiver number four. Number four. And this is uh, from section 275-D, subsection... 3C rear yard setback from 30 feet to 10 feet average. Any other comments? Roll call, please, President, on waiver four. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Sobis? Yes. Labri? Yes. Vinia Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Okay, motion to approve waiver number five. Waiver number five. Uh, this is from section 275D, uh, subsection 35, depth from 200 feet to 91.6 feet average. Thank you. Any other comments? Roll call, please. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCulloch? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Falkir? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Solvis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinac Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And waiver five is approved. Okay, and this is a uh, motion to approve waiver number six. Motion six. Section 275D, uh, subsection eight, side yard from 20 feet to 6.5 feet average. Any other comments? Roll call, please. 
President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Crampets. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pena Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And waiver six is approved. Okay. And now uh, this is a motion to approve the special permit. And the applicant, I'll just read the verbiage here. Applicant shall comply with all SPRAC requirements and comments as evidenced by a written communication from the Director of Planning. Any other comments on this one? Seeing none, roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McCulloch. Yes. Brooks. Yes. yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pena Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have a favorable yeah. report from the Zoning Committee for special permit Excuse application. Me. Hold on, hold Excuse on. Excuse me one second, sorry. Uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned that this is the permit to run with the land. Okay, also. and uh, on this special permit, it runs with the land. Thank you. We have a favorable report from the Zoning Committee for special permit application under 275-27-1 for the purpose of construction and installation of a 120-foot tall monopole tower located at 939 Chickabee Street and installation, of op installation and operation of a wireless communication facility. Waivers requested, 275-27-1 of the zoning ordinance in connection with screening. Applicant Blue Sky Towers. Councilor Bellacare. Okay, um, the, this is a motion that the favorable zoning report be received and the special permit be granted this evening with restrictions. Motion made and second that the zoning committee special permit be approved this evening uh, with restrictions on the motion. Okay. Uh, this is a special permit I'm like under, excuse me, special permit application uh, under 275 section 27-1 for the purpose of construction and installation of 125 foot, foot tall monopole tower located at 939 Chicopee Street and uh, the installation and operation of a wireless communication facility. Uh, there is a one waiver that's uh, requested before we vote on the special permit. And um, this is the waiver, uh, motion uh, to approve waiver number one. Motion made and second to approve waiver number one on the motion. Uh, on the motion, uh, this is the waiver requested section 275-27.1 of the zoning ordinance in connection with the screening. And what they mean with the screening is to allow the use of natural and existing foliage. All right, so uh, first we'll vote on the Yes, we'll uh, on the vote waiver. on, yeah. Any other comments on the waiver? Uh, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yep. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pena Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Okay, and now, um, now we're going to vote on the... Uh, Special permit uh, application, um, and so the motion is to uh, vote on the special permit application. Motion made and second to approve the special permit application on the motion. Okay, and it looks like there's some restrictions here. With restrictions. Uh, with restrictions. Uh, this is a permit to run with the land, and uh, I'm trying to read the verbiage here. It looks like $20,000 bond submitted prior to installation issued at the certificate of occupancy. Applicants shall comply with all report requirements and comments as evidenced uh, with the written communication from the director of planning. And it looks like uh, as per tax records, 939 is known as 929 uh, Chickabee Street. Um, so, and again, this is a special permit to run with the land. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Penny Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Be it ordered that the ordinance subcommittee meet to discuss drive-throughs and potential for a city council to require a special permit to construct one. Motion made and second. Oh, I'm sorry. The uh, zoning. Contraband care. Oh, it's ordinance. 
ordinance. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Costello. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, it's the next one. Uh, through uh, through the chair to the city attorney, um, in regards to this order, we are going to change it from the ordinance subcommittee to the public works committee. Is that correct? Yeah. So there would be an. I think the motion motion the revised motion would be to. Um, accept the order and send it to the Public Works Subcommittee for a public hearing. So motion made to accept the order and revise it to indicate Public Works Committee. Is that correct? Yep, for a public hearing. For a public hearing. Which public one are works. we on? 26. Yep. Motion made and second that the order be revised to be sent to the Public Works Committee on the motion. Yes, um, this is a conversation that I had with Councillor Dobas in regards to drive-throughs that are happening in our city in regards to uh, certain businesses, whether they're McDonald's. Uh, I know in Dairy Queen they have a, a drive-through in, in, in our neighborhood. Um, so we're just looking for a discussion to how we can improve how drive-throughs um, are uh, functioning. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor of sending it? Derek, Derek Dobas. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilor Dobas. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I was a, a co-sponsor of this. Um, I was going to file legal language, but um, Attorney Garvey uh, suggested that we just file a, a vague order for now and see if there's support on the board for something like this. Um, this is a, a, a large issue in Ward 9, right, because of the Dairy Queen, uh, which backs up down Kenny Boulevard all the time. Uh, you have the McDonald's and Memorial Drive in Ward 9, which is uh, building a second drive through <coughs> on their property. Um, in, in Ward 6, you have the Chick-fil-A, which actually uh, is run very well, but uh, <laughs> it very easily um, could have caused a lot of traffic problems uh, if it wasn't... Um, you know, properly built. Uh, you know, um, I, I don't want to be anti-drive-through, right? That's not the point of this. But we just want to make sure that development is smart, that we have more tools to control development. And uh, drive-throughs are an issue in some parts of the city. Um, so we were looking at, you know, potentially just having one additional barrier so that the city council um, can have more conditions on an applicant. So that's the point of filing this tonight. Uh, to hopefully we'll have a better discussion in committee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, someone else have their hand up? A concert Krampets. Yeah, th through the, the chair to the, the filers of the motion, who do you want invited to the, the meeting from the city? Like the city engineer, DPW superintendent, you know, who planning. else? I think the planning should be there. Right, the right. It's actually in the SPRAC review. That, that's the concern, so we should send it to planning, yeah. have them there. Planning right. Planning yeah. should be there. Be there yeah. They're so the first of, step towards it. it. Okay, instead of public works, just, is there any other uh, I, I'm department? not sure it needs to go to public works because it has nothing to do with them at that point. Okay. It has to uh, do with... Through the chair to uh, the city attorney, uh, since DPW may not be appropriate, where else could we send this in regards to making sure that the city planner is involved in the discussion? We're, we're already doing it. You're sending it to his committee. He's asking, who do you want to be at that meeting oh, okay, to talk that's to? Fine. Okay. And our, our, my recommendation would be the planning department, yeah. not the DPW that's right. okay. first, um, because they're the, they're the front line. They're the SPRAC review people that we need to talk to. Okay, I thought that you meant that. No. Totally no public works, but as well, long as... Well, you can have them there, but planning needs to be there. <clears throat> okay, then I would just recommend Lee Puglia from the planning department. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's it? Yeah. That's it. Okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> from that point. You can invite a roll call. Okay, a roll call, please. A roll call. Yeah, I will. President LaFlame. Yes. Roy. Yes. Yeah, Sillitson. <laughs> yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McCullough. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Crampets. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Finiac Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. The order that the Public Works Committee meet to discuss the flushing of fire hydrants, both public and private. Council Labrie. A motion that the order be received and sent to the Public Works Committee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the Public Safety Committee for a public hearing. On the motion. Public Works. I mean Public Works Committee. So the reasoning of this, um, I received a call from uh, president of a local uh, condo association 
that was under the impression for the last uh, 26 years that the uh, hydrants in his condo complex were being flushed by the city of Chicopee. Uh, so I'd like to get some kind of dialogue with the fire department and the water department uh, because he knows that those hydrants haven't been touched in a long time. I think it's been taken care of now. He hired a company to come in and, uh, you know, take care of that. But we have other condos, other mobile homes, other parks in our uh, city that I think need to, uh, you know, file some kind of report with the fire department or the water department that, hey, every, every year, every two years, whatever the fire department and water department thinks, that they've got to say these hydrants work. We go over there and uh, the, the fire department puts a, you know, uh, uh, a certificate for uh, smoke detectors, but yet the fire hydrant might not be working. So, you know, it's kind of, let's get everybody on the same page. And uh, uh, I know the other condo associations are going to be interested in this meeting also. So uh, if we could invite the fire department and water department and I think the condo associations will show up because they have a little network that they talk to each other. So you'll let the condo associations know when the yeah, meeting is? Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll let the condo associations know All right. as many as I can. Okay. Roll call, please. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. <coughs> yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McCullough. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Fabri? Yes. And Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Be it ordered that the DPW install a <clears throat> no parking sign with arrows approximately five feet to the right of the driveway at 254 East Main Street. There is already an existing no parking anytime ordinance that runs from Belcher Street to five feet past 254 East Main Street. Con concert Krampitz. Motion that the order be received and sent to DPW for implementation. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the DPW for installation. On the motion. Uh, as mentioned, there's already an ordinance for <clears throat> no parking in that area. This is basically just putting a no parking sign uh, on the other side of the driveway because there's no sign in that area and people park there thinking that they're parking in the right area because they don't know how to read some of the signs, so by having the arrows, that will help them know that they can't park on either side of that sign, and this will alleviate a problem of uh, uh, the, the folks at this uh, residence having trouble getting in and out of their driveway because cars are parked right up near the, the driveway. They have been calling the police, uh, but by having a sign there, this will hopefully alleviate the need for constantly having the police go there and issue tickets. <laughs> Thank you, any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McCullough? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyrie? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinnie Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Be it ordered that the city engineer and the superintendent of the DPW appear before the Public Works Committee to discuss safety concerns at the intersection of Voss and Blanchard Street. Councilor Costello. Order received and sent to um, and have the Public Works Committee. Um, Motion made and second to send to. To have a discussion in regards to concerns at the intersections of Voss and Blanchard Street with the city engineer and superintendent of DPW requested to attend. Okay, motion made and second to send to the in the what committee? Public Works. Public Works Committee for discussion the, of safety. Discussion concerns. on safety on Voss and Blanchard Street. Right, with the city engineer and the superintendent of DPW invited to attend. As mentioned, go ahead. Uh, the reason that uh, this has been co-sponsored by myself and Councilor Flam is the uh, this particular intersection can be extremely hazardous, especially in the winter time. Um, and I know that the DPW has done a lot of work in, re in regards to coming to that section and looking at it to try to address the safety concerns in that area. And I must say this publicly, I've had neighbors tell me that they've seen the DPW, the city engineer, there frequently. And I think that's a tribute to them that they're concerned about this particular intersection and the safety. Thank you. 
Um, okay, um, I just want to make a comment, if I could, on this one. Uh, I need a roll call, but I just want to make a comment. Roll call, please. President LaFlamme. Abstain. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Kaskowski. <laughs> yes. Olive. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pena Costello. Yes. 12 yes. Thank you. Um, so this, this uh, order that was put in, um, uh, Councillor uh, Walczak uh, gave, give, uh, gave me a call, and uh, this is actually uh, was put in by him a year ago. He actually sent me the thing uh, regarding to get this done because it was a public safety issue a year ago. Okay. Um, so we need to look at this as soon as possible. But, but he did put it in, and he actually sent me the copy that the city council had sent a year ago to have this done. Okay. So we're going to work on it. Right. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Councillor. Balzac for doing that. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Call the roll. Oh, roll call, please. President Lafayette. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. Colliff. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Falkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobus. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Finian Costello. Yes. Twelve. Yes. And the motion passes. In order that the City Council meet to discuss the open meeting law complaint filed by Lisa Bievenu received on August 12, 2022. Councilor Tillotson. Motion, <coughs> motion to authorize the law department to answer the complaint in writing. Motion made a second to authorize the motion to authorize the law department to answer the complaint in writing. Um, I'm going to, uh, all in favor? Oh, um, no, no. Before the roll call, I'm going to have the. Dan talk. Dan would like to talk about it. Right, Go ahead, Dan. I'll yield it to, to our counselor. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this is a complaint that we received from a constituent regarding remote participation and the need to take all votes by roll call when a particular member of a council of this council or a committee is participating remotely. And she cited our meeting that we had, our last meeting that we had here in the in the auditorium on 8-2-2022. So you may recall at that meeting, we did have 10 members, including the chair, in person at the meeting, but we also did have three members participating remotely. So what seems to have happened is there's a pre-COVID and there's a post-COVID open meeting law requirement. So pre-COVID, you were required as a municipality to formally approve remote participation. So if a municipality wanted to participate remotely, it had to be formally approved, in this case, by the mayor and by the council. And there was discussions pre-COVID by the council and by the mayor's office to decide whether or not we wanted to actually participate remotely. And during those discussions, I believe the final conclusion was we did not want to adopt remote participation because we wanted to encourage people to actually come in person to the meetings so that when the community came to our meetings, they would actually see people live and in person and be able to communicate directly with those people. So although there was some discussion to officially uh, adopt remote participation, the city of Chicopee did not. Like with many other things, when COVID hit, things changed. And as a result of COVID, you may recall Governor Baker issued a number of orders, emergency orders. And one of those emergency orders allowed all communities, whether they had formally adopted remote participation or not, to actually participate remotely. Now, if a community prior to that executive order had formally adopted remote participation, there was a number of rules that the state had impo would, be in a, would impose upon anybody who actually participated remotely. And essentially, they boiled down to two major requirements. One is where the president would have to declare at the beginning of the meeting who would be participating remotely. No matter how obvious that may have been to us that people were participating remotely, the rules issued by the state were this chair has to state who is participating remotely. And then the second major change to those communities who had formally adopted remote participation was that all votes, regardless of whether they were ministerial in nature or substantial in nature, had to be by roll call. So at our last meeting, 
although the majority of our votes were taken by roll call, by our rules or by state statute. So as you're all aware, if there's a financial order, that has to be done by roll call. By state statute, if we have any issues with zone changes, roll call. Zoning, roll call. Ordinance changes, roll call. That at that meeting, we did take a number of ministerial motions by voice vote because again the chair was in place and there was a super majority of members here so he could determine whether or not the motion actually passed and those motions were such things such as taking an item out of order because we had a number of people in the audience who wanted to speak on a matter and wanted to hear the outcome of the matter there are things for example we took a five minute recess we did that by voice vote and other ministerial issues so when I received the complaint, and, and my, my estimation was when I initially reviewed the, Governor Baker's order, it was a pretty simple order. It was a two-page order, and it simply stated that all municipalities, whether they had formally adopted remote participation or not, were authorized to do that. I interpreted that order just like that, that if we wanted to participate, we could, and that we were authorized to do that. I did not, it did not state in the order that we also had to abide by those additional requirements for those communities who had formally adopted it. Those two being announcing at the beginning of the meeting who's, who's participating remotely and that all votes be taken um, whether, regardless of whether they were substantial or uh, ministerial in nature. I interpreted the governor's order to say we we're allowed to do that. I did not interpret it so that we'd have to also abide by the announcement at the beginning of the meeting and all votes to be taken by roll call. So when I received a copy of the complaint, I did contact the, the uh, state and did inquire as to whether or not when they interpreted the governor's order, whether they also imposed these additional conditions that were, that were imposed upon those communities that had formally adopted it, which we did not. And their answer was that yes, we are required to follow those rules as if we had formally adopted them, even though we didn't, but if we do participate in the governor's order and take advantage of it, that we are required to follow those rules. So my request to the council is that you allow me to answer the complaint as I've just stated that my interpretation was different than the state, that we've realized that we are now bound by those requirements and you may notice a significant difference in our meeting tonight. Regardless of how ministerial the motions happen to be, including allowing the president to, to, to speak on a matter or if we need to take a recess or we want to take things out of order, if someone is participating remotely, we can no longer take a voice vote, regardless of how many people are here, regardless of whether the chair is in the meeting. If there's one or more remote participants, we are required to, number one, announce at the commencement of the meeting and make note in our minutes, which we do, who's participating remotely, and secondly, regardless of whether it's a substantive motion or a ministerial motion, all motions have to now be done by roll call. So, my response to the complaint will be just that, that my interpretation was one way, the state interpreted a different way. We are now enforcing the rules that are um, imposed upon us by the fact that we are participating remotely. I do know that there's some discussion about sending this to our rules committee to decide whether or not we actually want to officially adopt it but at least until July of 2023, we are allowed to operate under the governor's emergency order. And I guess we'll take it up in rules to see if we want to extend it past that point. Thank you. So the motion, I mean the, um, the vote on the floor will be to give the law department, our attorney, uh, the permission to give a written re response back to the, um, the resident. Uh, roll call, please. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Jagrowski. Yes. McCullough. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pena Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. It ordered that the City Council meet to discuss the open meeting law complaint filed by Chrissy Pakula dated 8-9-2022. Councilor Tillotson. Same course. A motion to authorize the law department to answer the complaint. Motion made in second to allow the law department to answer the complaint in writing. Uh, as it was just mentioned by our attorney, it's the same situation. Correct? Correct. It, it is the same situation. It's just a little different in the facts. Well, if you can answer it, please. 
Essentially what happens is when the city of Chicopee has an executive <clears throat> session, that is done via special, um, special meeting. And our charter says that the special meetings can only be called by the mayor's office. So at our last executive session meeting, we prepare, the city prepared the 48 hour notice and in that notice we stated that we were gonna discuss pending litigation. The problem is that when you post a meeting for executive session, the law requires that you be as specific as you possibly can. So in the case of an executive session where you're dealing with pending litigation, the, the course of action should have been to actually name the case as opposed to just the generic term pending litigation. So in the future, we will make sure that we do one of two things, that when we post for an executive session, we specifically state the name of the case or cases to be discussed or the items to be discussed. But there's also a caveat to that rule that says, if we believe that it would put the city of Chicopee in a detrimental litigation position, we do not have to name the case. We can just simply state pending litigation with the added statement that we believe identifying the case and or the item to be discussed will put the city in a, in a detrimental litigation position. So in the case of our last meeting, as you're all aware, the only case that we discussed was the case of Sarah Fisher versus the city of Chicopee. So in my opinion, instead of putting pending litigation, because the, opposite, the opposing attorney was aware, as was the plaintiff, that we were having the executive session, they would not, or the city would not have been put in a detrimental litigation position. So had we done it correct, it should have specifically stated Sarah Fisher versus the city of Chicopee as opposed to the pending litigation. So my response to the complaint is going to be that in the future we will make sure that the law department makes an, in, an individual investigation and determination whether to specifically name a case or the item to be discussed, or if we feel as though it will put us in a negative position, we will specifically state pending litigation, but add the phrase that it would, naming the case or item to be discussed would put the city in a detrimental litigation position. So I've contacted the, um, the mayor's office, so I will in the future make sure that all notices that go out for any executive sessions are done by myself and, and or the law department so that when they go out, we specifically name the case to be, to be discussed or the item to be discussed or again, in the alternative, we state that naming the case would put the, the city of Chicopee in a negative, negative litigation position. All right, thank you. But, but nothing would have changed as far as the necessity for the executive session or the way the executive session was run. This just talks to or speaks to the 40 at hour posting. So you would have been able to see Sarah Fisher versus the city of Chicopee as opposed to pending litigation, but the, the general public would not have been authorized to be part of that meeting. Okay, thank you. Any questions or anything? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Jarowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez, yes. Valkyr, yes. Krampitz, yes. Dobis, yes. Labrie, yes. Vinia Costello. Yes. 12 yes. The motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule, parking prohibited Myrtle Street. Mm, Councilor Balakir. A uh, motion that the order be received, referred to the ordinance committee, take its first reading and conduct a public hearing. Motion made and second that the ordinance committee be sent to the ordinance committee for a public hearing uh, on the motion. Uh, on the motion, uh, this is a one-way narrow street, and a constituent of mine approached me, and I, I took a look at the site. Uh, this could be a troublesome spot, so uh, we would like to have no parking sign in front of 14 Myrtle Street to alleviate the situation. Thank you very much. Any other comment? Thank you. Roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagrowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. 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 Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Vinia Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule, handicap parking, 22 Plant Circle. Councilor, let's see, uh, Plant Circus, who's, I'm sorry. Brooks. Brooks. 
Councilor Burke, you want to take this one? Motion at the order be received and uh, sent to the committee this evening. Motion made a second that the the proposal be ordinance sent to ordinance for its first reading. Right. On the motion. On the motion, we'll take it up in committee. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Lafayette. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. yes. Mopez. Valkyr. Yes. Trampets. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yep. Pinia Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. We have an ordinance to strike from the following in schedule. Bus stop 6444, Chickabee Baptist, 996 Chickabee Street. Councilor Labrie. Motion in that proposed ordinance be sent to Ordinance Committee for a public hearing. Motion made second the proposed ordinance be sent to Ordinance Committee for a uh, first hearing uh, and public hearing. On the motion. On the motion, can we please advise, invite the PVTA and city engineer for their input? You sure can. Any other comments? Roll call. President LaFleur. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Valkyr. Yes. Trampets. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Penny Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. Bus stop 6444, Chickabee Baptist, 957 Chickabee Street. Councilor Labrie. Motion that the proposed ordinance be received and sent to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. Motion made and seconded that the proposed ordinance be received and sent to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. On the motion. On the motion, please invite PVTA and city engineer for their input. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflam? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Yes. Lopez? Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Pinac Costello? Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have an ordinance to strike from the following in schedule, one-way street, front street. Councilor Tillotson. Motion that the ordinance take its first reading and be referred to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the ordinance committee be sent to the ordinance committee to take its first reading and for a public hearing. On the motion. On the motion, oh, we'll, we'll talk about it in the committee. Any other comments? Roll call, please. President LaFleur. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Fabri. Yes. Pinac Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. One-way street, front street. Councilor Tillotson. Motion that the ordinance, uh, <coughs> ordinance be received, passed to the, uh, take its first reading and be referred to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the order be received and sent to the ordinance committee for a first reading. On the motion. On the motion, uh, these one, this one-way situation is, is all, all in downtown Chicopee. It's, it's for the uh, supermarket that's going in there. Uh, it's, uh, they need to be able to have two ways in order to take, the, to take their delivery. So uh, that's what this is all about. This was recommended by the engineer. Uh, there's no families involved here. It's strictly behind the, uh, uh, the, the, the plaza there in downtown Chicopee so that the, uh, the new, new uh, supermarket that's going in there, that way there their trucks can come in either way and, and be able to do, make their deliveries and pick up their, mm -hmm. and drop their foods off and pick up whatever they need to pick up, so. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Council Labrie. I was uh, just gonna question uh, the previous order. Uh, how far are we gonna go out and um, notify the people on the previous? Uh, well, online? it only goes behind the, um, the, uh, the shopping shop, plaza. The, the plaza there. There's yeah, a, there's no homes so there So that's at all. including the thir item 36 also? Correct. Okay, yeah, thank you, yeah. All, uh, roll call, please. Well, Council Flame, I had one comment. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Brooks, go ahead. I, I know that you and I both went out and looked at it. The unfortunate part of this, this is just, I guess, administrative in nature, but it had already been implemented, and I think you, taking your lead, you had to contact the DPW to ensure that traffic could not flow that way until this, this committee officially adopted the policy. Um, I think we, would, we spent some time on a Saturday afternoon going to look at that, but 
This will hopefully alleviate some of the concerns for a new business in the downtown that will definitely help um, those residents who don't have access to vehicles to be able to uh, shop and do their purchasing there. Thank you. Thank you. If it's the will of board, I would like to comment on what he just said. Yeah. Roll call, please. President Laflamme. Obscene. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Um, yes. Valkyr. Yes. Rampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Vinny and Costello. Yes. Well, yes. Thank you. Um, I know we want to get out of here, but I wanted to make a comment about this only because uh, the, uh, I've asked that question a little earlier regarding the arrows and that. Um, I have received a phone call and um, it, the painting of the lines are, were, are, are already been done and completed without an ordinance. And uh, that we, we can't allow that. That's, we can't enforce that or nothing. It could cause an, a serious issue with the city. So uh, Councilor Brooks and Councilor Tillotson and uh, myself, Councilor Brooks and I went out there and reviewed it all. And we called the DBW supervisor, uh, Lynn, uh, Liz, and she came right down and agreed. And that's why, if you look, there's uh, barricades put up that says no entrance. Because without an ordinance, the police department or nobody else can enforce that. And the liability is on our part. So that's why we decided to get this done the way we did. And uh, I asked that question tonight because we got to make sure that ordinances are done. And I'd say, oh, they're going to do it ahead of time. Nothing should be done ahead of time until an ordinance is in place. Thank you. I agree. Roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pena Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule, one-way street, front street. Councilor Tillotson. <coughs> motion that the <coughs> order be received, take its first reading, and refer it to the ordinance committee for a public hearing. Motion made a second that the or uh, proposed ordinance be received and sent to the ordinance committee for its first reading and public input. On the motion. And a motion, though, this is all part of that same. Uh, Thank you. Behind that plaza there. It's been, uh, Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. Colliff. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Pez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Obis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Vinny Costello. Yes. Yes. And the motion passes. <clears throat> Ordinance to add to the following in schedule solar lighted isolated stop sign, Newberry Street. Councillor Roy. Yeah, motion that the uh, ordinance be received and sent to the ordinance committee for the first reading. Motion made and second that the proposed ordinance be received and sent to the ordinance committee for a first reading uh, uh, on the motion. On the motion, uh, this is a problem intersection up there in Newberry and Springfield Street. Uh, in the past six months, we've had four major accidents up there. And all we're looking to do is uh, put up a solar lit isolated stop sign. It's got the, the lights all around the, the stop sign and hopefully that'll, that'll help the situation up there. Uh, I don't know if it'll solve the problem, but we have to make the first step, I believe. And, uh, and I'm hoping this will help. Thank you very much. Any other comments, Councilor Balak here? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President. Um, no, I was uh, called um, uh, uh, during vacation with this situation, and as Councilor Roy alluded to, this has been a problematic corner that's been going on for a long, long time, and uh, we got to try to do something. I know that we've uh, we've implemented something on Front Street uh, regarding speed tables. This is another another uh, uh, device in our toolbox. And we have to definitely try something before somebody gets killed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Roll call, please. President Laflamme? Yes. Roy? Yes. Tillotson? Yes. Zagorowski? Yes. McAuliffe? Yes. Brooks? Yes. Lopez? Yes. Valkyr? Yes. Krampitz? Yes. Dobis? Yes. Labrie? Yes. Vinny yes. Costello? Yes. Well, yes. And a motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following in schedule. Do not block the box. New Ludlow Road. Councilor Costello. Motion that the ordinance be received, referred to the ordinance committee for its first reading. Motion made and second that the proposed ordinance uh, be received and sent to the ordinance committee for its first reading on the motion. On the motion, this is a intersection that can be 
blocked uh, frequently, causes a lot of uh, traffic issues. So I'm asking that the city engineer be invited to the meeting. Uh, city engineer. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Falkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pinia Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have an ordinance to add to the following and schedule. Do not block the box. New Ludlow Road. Councilor Costello. Motion that the ordinance be received and be referred to the ordinance committee. Take its first reading. Motion make in second that the proposed ordinance be received, sent to the ordinance committee for its first reading. And I would ask that the city engineer be present at the meeting. It is a sim similar situation in regards to block intersection that creates traffic issues. Thank you very much. Uh, roll call, please. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Falkir. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Benia Costello. Yes. OBS. And a motion passes. We have an application for a new special permit under section 275-9L2 of the Municipal Zoning Ordinance for the purpose of a 69-foot tall highway pole sign for Milton Rents. Increase in sign face area from 120 square feet to 432 square feet. Reduction of setback requirements from 25 feet to zero feet. This request is to edit the previous application, which erroneously labeled the height as 60 feet, which is at the bottom of the sign, 69 to the top. Location of property, 60 Fuller Road. Councilor Bellicure. A motion to receive the new special permit application referred to the Zoning Subcommittee, Planning Department, Engineering Department, and Building Department for a public hearing. Motion made in second that we send the application to zoning for a public hearing and also to the Department of Public Works, DBW, I mean, I'm sorry, um, planning, engineering, engineering, and building. In building. Okay. Uh, on, on the motion. The, on the motion, we'll take this up in committee. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez, Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pinia Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. Okay. We have an application for a new special permit under section 275-50 of the Municipal Zoning Ordinance for the purpose of C1 and 2 digital message sign boards. Location of property 765-767 Memorial Drive. Councilor Balakir. A motion to receive the new special permit application. Motion made in second that we received this, the application and sent to the zoning committee for a public hearing. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, we'll take this up in committee. <coughs> Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Indiana Costello. Yes. 12, yes. And the motion passes. We have an application <clears throat> for a new special permit under section 275-40G, 2 and 4 of the Municipal Zoning Ordinance for the purpose of redevelopment of an existing building from an auto repair shop to retail sales showroom for Hanush Jewelers with reduced on-site parking. Location of property, 704 Memorial Drive. Councilor Balakir. A uh, motion to receive new special permit application for the Zoning Subcommittee Planning Department, Engineering, and Building Department for a public hearing. Motion made and second that the applicant be received and sent to zoning for a public hearing and invite the Planning, Engineer, DBW, and Building Department. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, we'll take this up on, also in committee. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlamme. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McAuliffe. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Obis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Pinia Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And the motion passes. We have an application for a new special permit under section 275-9 of the Municipal Zoning Ordinance for the purpose of installing small wireless facilities on 10 existing utility poles under chapter 277. Location of property, C narrative. Applicant, Selco partnership with Verizon. Councilor Balakir. 
A motion to receive the new special permit application and refer to the Zoning Subcommittee, Planning Department, Engineering, and Building Department for a public hearing. Motion made and seconded that the application be received and sent to Zoning, Building, Planning, Engineering, and DBW. On the motion. Uh, on the motion, we'll also take this up in committee. All Amen. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zigorowski. Yes. McCulloch. Yes. Yeah. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Bree. Yes. Finia Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. A new, app, new, a new application for a hawker and peddler, peddler's license to sell ice cream at various locations. Name and address is Julissa Rwanda. Councilor Brooks. 60 Wheatland. Make a motion to receive and refer to committee. Motion made and second to receive the applicant and send it to license committee for a public hearing. On the motion. Uh, take it up in committee. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President Laflam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Ziggerowski. Yes. McCullough. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Dovis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Penny and Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. A new application for class two license for A and M auto sales and repair at 451 Granby Road. Councilor Brooks. Make a motion to receive the application for a license committee for a public hearing. Motion made and second to receive the license application and sent to the license committee for a public hearing. On the motion. We'll take it up in committee. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. McCulloch. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Rampitz. Yes. Dobis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Finia Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. A new application for an auto repair license for A&M Auto Sales at 451 Granby Road. Councilor Brooks. Make a motion to receive and refer to the license subcommittee for a public hearing. Motion made and second that we receive the applicant and send it to the license subcommittee for a public hearing. On the motion. Take it up in committee. Any other comments? Seeing none, roll call please. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillotson. Yes. Zigorowski. Yes. Mullen. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyr. Yes. Krampitz. Yes. Sobis. Yes. Bree. Yes. Pinia Costello. Yes. 12 yes. And a motion passes. Okay. I wonder if everybody's still awake here. Councilor Dobaz, you want to go first? Uh, sure. I want to thank uh, my colleagues for supporting Ward 6 residents tonight uh, with the uh, Always oh, Burnett Road truck stop. Thank you for supporting Ward 6 residency. The only other thing I want to mention is Wednesday at 7 o'clock, there's a Zoning Board of Appeals meeting uh, that affects Ward 6 residents. There's a, a decades old uh, vacant lot on Doback Avenue, uh, and it's a unique situation because two different owners owned half of the property, but together uh, it's a buildable lot that um, is the same as every other lot on the street. Uh, and the two owners, they hated each other for decades. They finally reached an agreement. Uh, I'm going to support the variance next week. Uh, that's Wednesday, uh, 7, 7 o'clock. Um, I don't know if it's the third or fourth, fourth floor of City Hall. I'll post it online. Uh, I'm encouraging uh, at-large city councilors to attend if you're able to. Uh, I know a lot of people will be very happy to see that variance th uh, go through. So thank you to anybody in the city uh, who helped uh, that deal. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor McAuliffe. I'll say. Thank you. Councilor uh, Costello. Uh, thank you. Um, I just want to thank Bruce Boyles and all his hard work when he gets together once a year to remember September 11th. And this year the mass will be at 7 o'clock at St. Stan's. But we're fortunate to have Bruce Broyles as a person that's active in our community and remembers those that were lost that day and the fact that America changed. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor uh, Krampitz. Yeah, I was just going to mention about the, uh, the mass at St. Stan's for the 9-11 memorial. Uh, to encourage you know, folks to attend that. There's also a, a small uh, ceremony that's held uh, at the uh, safety complex Sunday morning at uh, quarter of nine. Uh, it starts uh, as a 9-11 remembrance. And then I just wanted to take a moment uh, to, uh, to thank folks. Uh, it was 20 years ago yesterday that my dad had passed away, uh, who used to sit in this chair. And, um, you know, the years have gone by, and one of the things that, you know, even after the ceremony, uh, uh, services and that, was the number of people that I would meet 
uh, you know, performing, uh, you know, as an alderman and then as a city council, the number of people who would uh, uh, tell stories about my dad. And it was really heartwarming to kind of have that legacy and kind of have it still there kind of with me, you know, through the stories that, that people would, uh, would tell about the different times he had helped different people out. So uh, my mother and I were always appreciative to hear those kind of things. Uh, so just wanted to, you know, thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Roy. Yeah, I just want to remind everybody that uh, tomorrow we're having a flag raising uh, to honor the 75th anniversary of the United States Air Force. Uh, it's going to be outside in front of City Hall at 10 a.m. Uh, hopefully you can come down and, and uh, partake in it. And this is your city. Take pride in it. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Councilor Blibri. I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Tillotson. <clears throat> School is back in session, so be careful when you're driving. Speeding is one of the biggest problems that we have in the city, so be careful. Thank you. Councilor Balakir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, again, I want to thank the health care workers for the great job they're doing during this COVID crisis. Uh, there's a new variant that we're still struggling with, and as we're ending up with summer, we're going to be going back indoors. So let's hope that people can follow the rules, and hopefully we can keep an eye on this. Uh, again, I also want to reference the Ukraine crisis. It's an extremely dangerous situation, um, especially now, again, that the weather's starting to change and um, they could affect us here as well because of oil and gas supplies. So to please be considerate and pray for what's going on. And if you can, if you can possibly donate to a local organization, that'd be appreciating. Uh, my fellow counselor mentioned about speeding. Yes, school is back in session, but one good thing that we're doing with speeding is the speed tables are up. They've been marked. So I think what's gonna happen is things are gonna finally slow down a little bit on Front Street, and hopefully this is gonna be an example that's gonna be a model for the rest of the city. And one final note is trash is gonna be picked up tomorrow in Ward 4, so if you haven't put your trash out yet, please do. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Zigarowski. Just a couple of comments. Uh, I schedule a public safety subcommittee meeting on Thursday, October 20th at 6.30 in the chambers. That's October 20th, 6.30 in the chambers, public safety meeting. So I just want to bring that to your attention. Also, you know, when you talk about speeding, I don't understand people driving. Stop signs mean stop. Red lights mean stop. Right on red means stop, then go right on red. Just trying to bring that to the public's attention, but I guess they just don't understand it. Speeding causes, look at what happened at Grattan Street in Montgomery. Two people were killed because somebody racing down Memorial Drive. So if you see something going on, call the police department, certainly uh, 592-6341. And my last statement would be uh, my condolences to the queen. I know she's in a different country, but She's there 70 years, I guess. She was 96 years old. We could probably learn something from her around this table here. She lasted all these years. How, I don't know. But good luck. And I, I my condolences to all the people in England. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Lopez. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that we did the right thing today, um, and I'm proud to serve on, the, on a council who does the right thing. So I appreciate that. Um, regarding pilot that that was, we, we made the right choice. Um, there are not many days left of September on a brighter note, which means summer is about to come to a close. However, I'm looking forward to sweater weather and the biggie. So I hope you are, all are too. Um, I'm looking forward to apple cider and hopefully, you know, making sure that we don't have a million subcommittee meetings during the biggie. I just need those two weeks, y'all, so that I can attend the biggie as much as possible. Uh, but thank you all for, for joining us today. There were over 100 people in this hall. I don't think I've ever seen that many people at a council meeting. Um, and enjoy the rest of the summer. We'll schedule those meetings. Councilor Brooks. <laughs> yeah, I'd just like to <clears throat> thank those who've reached out to me. As some of you know, I was the... Uh, to Councilor Zagorowski's point, I was the victim of somebody running a red light last week in Hoyoke and was hit head on and uh, sustained some pretty substantial injuries. I had planned to be in the chambers tonight, but unfortunately the injuries I sustained were not going to allow me to be able to sit in a chair for a prolonged period of time. Um, it absolutely is important to obey all traffic laws and 
Yeah, it's been it's been a rough week, but for the most part, uh, you know, certainly I I hope I'll be on the mend. I've been pretty lucky in that regard, and uh, I hope all involved in the accident will make a full recovery. So that's about it. Thank you. And I'd just like to thank uh, my fellow members of the City Council uh, for a long night tonight. Um, it went well. I thought it was going to go a little, a little bit longer than this, actually. So um, I'm glad, and I thank all the public that did come out and speak. Uh, I think the City Council did the right thing, too. But I also want to thank uh, our attorney, Dan Garvey. Uh, Dan, uh, Dan and I, and many of us, and many in this room, and I know Councilor Tillotson and everybody else, calls Dan many, many times for a lot of stuff. And uh, he doesn't get recognized enough for all we, he does for the city council um, every day. Um, I know I'm on the phone with, with him three to four times a day, and, and he'll say to me, well, I got to go. Jim's on the other line, or this, George is on the other line. So um, on behalf of the city council, I want to thank you again, Dan, for doing a good job. <laughs> and I'll take a roll call to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Roll call. President LaFlam. Yes. Roy. Yes. Tillerton. Yes. Zagorowski. Yes. Collip. Yes. Brooks. Yes. Lopez. Yes. Valkyrie. Yes. yes. Krampitz. Yes. Obis. Yes. Labrie. Yes. Penny and Costello. Yes. Twelve yes. And the motion passes. <laughs> Have a good night.